Hey guys, welcome to the first Blue Hawk Game Day show of the year. We're so excited to be back with you guys. As you can see, I have a new host with me this year. This is Cass Venner. She's going to be with me all throughout game day. As Dallas mentioned, my name is Cass Venner. I'm a senior from Billings, Montana. I'm on the softball team, involved in different student activities on campus and whatnot. Um, yeah. And as you guys remember me, I'm Dallas Mitchell. So just to clarify, Coulter is not here today as a host. We only saw it to be fitting that he be our first guest on the show. So, Coulter, you want to introduce yourself? This is weird, guys, because <laughs> I'm usually sitting in that spot. But uh, I'm Coulter Hickok. I'm now the facility supervisor of aquatics over at the West River Community Center and for Dickinson Parks and Rec. And for a long time, I was the host on this show uh, and also regular Hawk Talk. And then just graduated last May or yeah, last May. I guess that counts as yeah. last May. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it only took six years to graduate. How does it feel to like pass the reins over and not it's, be in charge of this? I'm happy that you guys are taking it over and Thank gonna you. run well with the show. I'm really happy that Ron and Trace are still here, uh, always keeping the direction. Plus, it's always good to see these guys. Um, no, I think it's gonna be great that you guys are taking it over. So, did that answer the question? Yes, it did answer the question. Being in this seat is so <laughs> much weirder than usually sitting in my regular spot. Like, I can tell why the guests are so nervous now just because like they have no idea what the questions are beforehand even though they really do they just pretend like they don't insider, <laughs> now you know the secret insider <laughs> secret um but yeah uh this is this is different a good different though sure yeah. <laughs> sweet well i guess we're gonna check out the weather for today a little bit more hot than usual for the hawks 12 p.m looking about 89 degrees um, 1 p.m. about 90, 2 p.m. 93, and 3 p.m. 94. Um, we actually had to move up the game due to the weather conditions at 12 p.m. So hopefully the Hawks can handle that weather. Hopefully those boys stay hydrated all day. Yeah, good luck, Hawks. It was kind of funny. I called my mom and I told her that the game got, got moved up, and she was like, have they never played in Arizona before? Like, <laughs> we're used to playing in 120, and it's 90 degrees Not there. everybody gets to play in Arizona. Dallas. I know, I know. I'm sorry. But you got to drink the pickle juice. Yeah. There are, there no are cramps. a lot of people no that cramps. drink the pickle juice and the Gatorade and the Powerade because we represent everybody equally. No paid sponsorships. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, People will be cramping, uh, hopefully not too bad, because that can be kind of rough on the playing conditions. Uh, yeah, just drink water. Heck yeah. So I know you've been a host here for a while, and I feel like the fans kind of know who you are, but we want to dive deeper into who is Coulter Hickok. So Coulter, what did your time look like at DSU? I mean, as I said, it was six years. I played football. I originally came here because of a football scholarship. Um, Unfortunately, things didn't really work out where I got some head injuries, but Coach Stanton, I talked with him, and I wanted to help the football team know however I could. So I became the assistant, or not the assistant coach, I became the assistant <laughs> student manager because there was already a manager there. So as soon as this guy graduated, I kind of took that over. I was a film guy, water boy, laundry boy. You name it. It, it was <laughs> everything that they needed help with. So yeah, I was just happy to help out with whatever I could. And then sophomore year came around after my second freshman year. Uh, we already talked about this <laughs> off camera, but uh, that's when I kind of got involved with the Heritage Foundation and then helping out with Hawk Talk. And so, yeah, I guess that's really the rest is history. All right, man. What are you doing now that you're graduated? As I said, I, was, I am the uh, facility supervisor of aquatics over at the West River Community Center and for Dickinson Parks and Rec. So that just means I'm really in charge of the pools, the lifeguards, uh, ordering food for the outdoor pool when we were in season for that. Uh, just making sure that everybody was having a good time and staying hydrated and not keeling over. So do you see yourself being in Dickinson for a long time then? I see no problems with Dickinson. I really enjoy the community. People here are great. Like, people at the foundation are great, school are great. Uh, so, I mean, as long as I don't, like, see myself leaving here for a while, mm -hmm. then I'm here for a while. Can you tell me a little bit about your TikToks on the West River Community <laughs> Center Instagram page? Or? Oh yeah, so basically they decided that uh, because I have the model body right. for somebody being in a, one of those videos, uh, it basically started when I saw a video of Burt Kreischer. Do you guys know who that is? I believe so. It, no. He's a comedian and this was the time where he was coming out with his own movie and it was the same time as The Little Mermaid was coming out with the remake that Disney made. So. I thought this would be kind of funny to promote the outdoor <laughs> pool opening. 
So what I did was uh, somebody uh, at the West River Community Center had like one of those mermaid towels and we got some like green tablecloth, we wrapped it around. I got like a pink seashell bra that we made out of construction paper and we cut up a towel. And like, honestly, we didn't even need to. I could have put the towel on, but you know, we wanted to be- Very re innovative. Realistic, but my office got covered in red, <laughs> red little cloth pieces. So yeah, that was just kind of the start of that. And then things got uh, moving on to where I was promoting flag football, uh, dodgeball or kickball. And then, so yeah, it's just a lot of fun. TikTok star of Dickinson, right. North Dakota right here. Unfortunately, we can't use TikTok, so it's Instagram Reels. So oh. if you're curious about what we're talking about, you can go to Dickinson Park's uh, Instagram and then the West River Community Center Instagram. Your views are gonna go up after this show. I really hope so. <laughs> That's what I'm always trying to promote, is just promote. Free heck. promotion yes. right here for Coulter. Except when it comes to brands, no free ads. <laughs> Thank you for that. No problem. All right, so what's your favorite part of the DSU football game? I mean, honestly, it's the tailgate. Uh, like, yeah. I mean, people really enjoy the tailgate. They've been growing that thing for years. It's huge ever since I started going, even though I really couldn't. Uh, I first experienced it when I was like a senior in high school, getting recruited, seeing the game, uh, meeting the people from the touchdown club. Everybody's great there, people from the foundation, and everybody just wants to hand you food. Like, that's the <laughs> weird part yeah. about our tailgate. Like People are just there to have fun, free food, free drinks. Uh, if you're over 21, <laughs> you can participate, but like sodas, waters, whatever it is, it's a lot of fun. Like You get to meet people that you would never thought you would get to meet throughout the community, and that's like a good uh, connecting way. Like You can just get to meet all these people and it's a lot of fun. We get the music cranking, the cheerleaders are there, then the hawk walk. You get to see the players without the helmet, without the shoulder pads, everything. And then you get to be like, oh yeah, there's actually a, a kid under there. Like <laughs> a kid that yeah. means a lot to the school, good community representation. So I think everything that happens at the tailgate is all for a good purpose. So you said from your first time going to it, to it now it's definitely grew and expanded from what it was. For sure. Yeah. I mean. So like the cheerleaders, like when I first started here, we didn't have the biggest of cheer teams. I think maybe there were six. Mm -hmm. And now there's a two crews of cheerleaders that participate. Sometimes you get the competitive team, they're there cheering on the sideline team or whatever it is. More community involvement, more businesses even go to the tailgates. Uh, and then pushing the old hawk's nest up to the, <laughs> because that thing goes about maybe five miles an hour. Sometimes you gotta be right behind it with your hazards on just to even try to limp it up Push it the forward. Hill. So awesome. it's awesome just to see how much, I mean, last year there was a mechanical bull there. Yes, there oh, was, yeah. there was. There was a mechanical bull in the tailgate. Like what other school does that? <laughs> Wasn't there a keg? There was a keg a and potty? built into a porta potty, which I yeah. thought was the coolest thing ever. I'd never seen or heard anything like that. Yeah. There was? There yeah. was. Well, you I'm not participating out. in football anymore. <laughs> so you're going to be at the party. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Uh, yeah, did I answer the question? Yeah, yeah you did. You totally oh, fantastic. Did. Nailing this too. guest position. All right, now what we're here for, your Blue Hawk football team. We're going to go into the recap of the Rocky game. Um, the Hawks did lose a close game against them last week in Billings, 20 to 19. There were multiple standouts for the Hawks, but unfortunately it was not enough to take the win. But they had a good week of practice to prepare and recoup, recoup for this upcoming game against Mayville. And kind of when we talked about whether it's been hot this week, so hopefully that kind of helps prepare them for the game later today. Uh, Mayville also is coming off of a loss from last week and against a Frontier opponent where they lost to Montana State University Northern 14 to zero. But on the bright side, over the years of the Hawks and the Comets competing, we do hold the Comets 20 to one over the course of the games, which looking pretty good, good for the Hawks. Odds are, odds are in our favor, hopefully. So we decided to let Coulter still have some rain in the show today. So we're gonna let him take over the news in the North Star from this past week. I'm so excited about this. <laughs> you have no we idea. knew you were gonna be excited. So we were like, we'll surprise him. We'll just let him take charge of this. All right. <laughs> uh, so last week, Valley City, they go and they play Jamestown in Valley City. This game actually kind of kicks off like the start of college football, mm -hmm. brand new week zero going into the 2023-2024 football season. Jamestown, Valley City, this game kicks it off and it's actually kind of fun just to maybe 
talk a little smoke about both teams because, I mean, I hate Valley City, I hate Jamestown equally. <laughs> so it's always fun, but it was a really good game. So Valley City upset Jamestown. I, I think it can be considered an upset. Yeah. It's kind of maybe a bow, battle of the toilet bowl. <laughs> Don't really know if I can say that because now I'm a guest, but you know, I'm just going to speak my mind. Uh, and then moving on. So Waldorf beat Briarcliff 35 to 20 and will be taking on the University of St. Francis. Would Later be? today. Yeah. Later today? Mm -hmm. That's what it is? Yep. All right, Later just today. Sure. <laughs> Uh, Dakota State lost to Dakota Wesleyan 23-13 to and just played Wisconsin Lacrosse, who we previously played before, and one of our old coaches, he coaches there, uh, Coach McGuire. Uh, that would be last night where they lost 31-6. to Did I say that correctly? Yep. 31-6. to sure <laughs> And like we said before, Mabel lost to Montana State University Northern, and they're in the Frontier. We played a Frontier school. We played Rocky Mountain College. Uh, the Frontier is no joke. No, they are in any of the sports. No. They're pretty stacked all around. Do the Frontier schools have a lot of like softball, baseball? Um, their softball teams are normally ranked in the top 25, I would say, majority of them. Wow. Mm -hmm. So they're pretty good. So as we just said, Frontier schools are no <laughs> joke. But uh, yeah, I mean, Mayville just to only lose by two scores is to be commended. It's not terrible, yeah. That is not, I, I tip my hat to them for that, for sure. However, that game could, probably could have been considered the battle of the toilet bowl because MSU Northern is really kind of down in the below the ranks of Rocky yes. Mountain or Frontier specifically. Uh, then, where am I at? Um, oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> a reminder of what the conference looks like this year. We unfortunately lost two schools in the North Star. We lost presentation in Iowa Wesleyan. This did put some implications into kind of our system for the conference, along with not just football, along with the other sports. We got volleyball, we got basketball, we got softball, baseball. Did I say softball twice? No. Okay. So I'm I did say good. softball twice. <laughs> yeah, we that does kind of play a big part into our school specifically, just because like uh, I had interviewed Coach Dan one time and he had said that Presentation and Mabel were kind of like travel partners, mm -hmm. so I mean Mabel is gonna have to try to find us, try to find somebody to then travel with them. So like the Hawks can play one day, and then the Hawks can play the other opponent the other day. So it just doesn't affect football; it affects a lot of other schools. And the heart goes out to those kids. Like I heard, presentation was allowing some students to finish out their degrees, uh, and then like back to softball. Didn't presentation? choose to graduate rather than go to? Yes, so last year at conference um, they did choose to graduate instead of coming to play us so they did not participate in the conference tournament for softball this past May. I mean, that does seem kind of rough, like you only really get like one college graduation. I know. So yeah, my heart goes out to everybody. I mean, we talk a lot about how presentation was not the best, but like we're all part of the North Star family. Mm -hmm. So we, we can joke all we want, but really, it's about kids and yeah. getting a degree. Yeah. So shrinking down to the conference, which switching down to the conference of five, which includes Mayville, Valley City, Dakota State, Waldorf, and of course, Dickinson State. Now going into the picks of the North Star, hopefully now that you are just a guest, maybe your picks will be a little bit better, but you only have two, so. I mean, your odds are looking in your favor so far. Wow. <laughs> Thank goodness. So for the first pick, we have Waldorf, who is currently 1-0 one, one at University of St. Francis. Um, this is going to be their first game, but they are ranked 24 out of 25. So for my pick, I am going to go with University of St. Francis. I think I'm going to agree with you on that one. <laughs> he just wants to pick otherwise so he can say... You know, I'm trying to break out of that habit because... We had Dallas and Hillary last year. They always were dogging on me the entire season for home games when we were doing Blue Hot Game Day. For once, Dallas, I think I'm actually going to agree with wow. you and Cass. Wow. I'm going to agree the University of St. Francis takes this game against Waldorf. Times have changed now that you're a guest. You know, once you get older and you get... <laughs> and older and wiser. <laughs> <laughs> older, I don't know about wiser. Uh, yeah, you kind of see the error of your ways and maybe you decide maybe you pick with Dallas because she knows apparently football better than I do. No, I wouldn't go that far. I'm learning. 
but I wouldn't say I know more. Surface level. Yeah, no. surface level. Yeah. We'll get into I'll strategy only, later. Yeah. <laughs> I only played the sport for like <laughs> 10 plus years. but. Um, <laughs> and for our second pick in the North Star, uh, Mayville, who is 0-1, and Dickinson State, who is 0-1. Uh, Dickinson State is currently ranked 19, and these rankings will not change until September 11th. I don't really think we need to talk about this. I think we all can mutually agree that we're going to pick Dickinson State. Stay I would true. hope so. Staying true to DSU. You're going to say you're saying? <laughs> I'm leading up to it. <laughs> Dickinson State has a special place in my heart. I love this place. So, never a day I bet against the Hawks. <laughs> never, ever, ever. I do like this table because I can like... Bang on it? Yes. I think that we should just have you come on every show and when we do the picks you can just do your thing. And I mean... I think we could make it happen. There probably could be a sound bite. Not, we could. <laughs> not telling Trace or Ron to make a specific sound bite with, like, with my face on it, saying never a day a bit against the Hawks, but hint, I'm hint. just kind of throwing that idea out there. I don't even know <laughs> if, if anyone is listening. I don't even know if they're here right now, maybe not behind like a partition or anything, but <laughs> I think that could possibly be a thing. There may have been a thumbs up from a man named Trace Wells. Unclear. <laughs> All right, and now to our sponsors. We have a lot of th sponsors to thank. Um, the DSU Heritage Foundation, Consolidated, Dakota Bank, Charbonneau Car Center, Bush Lumber, and of course, you, the fans. Without all of you, this show would not be a possibility, so thank you. Also, be sure to check out our social medias on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at DSU Foundation. After this game, the Hawks will be at the University of Wisconsin Stout next weekend. Then we'll have the weekend off of the 16th. Then following up with that, they will make a long trip to Waldorf. And then they will round up se September by heading next door to Valley City. The Hawks will finally be back at the Hank on October 7th, where they will take on Dakota State. So catch the game right up after this. And as always, Hawks, Hawks are up. Are up. Saturday afternoon, a heated one. We're near 90 degrees at kickoff time here at 12 noon, but the Blue Hawks and the Comets getting ready to do battle. We want to send a special greeting out to uh, Craig Keating, Dan Keating, and the crew in uh, Mayville, North Dakota on KMAV. The Keatings and KMAV just do a superb job of covering sports out in eastern North Dakota and the high school ranks now they're back with the comets on the sports season for 2023 and 2024 and jim and myself honored to call the first comet game on kmav in a while uh, in a while and uh, we are pleased to do that for kmav and the keatings today and uh, i know they'll do a superb job all season long for the fall and winter and probably spring so again nice to have kmav back with comet sports and again we're glad to be back with blue hawk sports jim Dahl, the coin toss going on uh, down at 
at the 50-yard line. It is a sunny, warm, a southwest wind type of day, about 15 miles per hour. And the Blue Hawks in blue, the Comets in white and blue, and looking forward to a good game today, Jim. Interesting to see both teams coming off a loss last week. And both teams coming away with uh, close losses last week. Of course, Dickinson State uh, lost at Rocky Mountain College, went for two late in the ball game to try and get the victory, couldn't get it, and lost to two Rocky Mountain College for Mayville State. They traveled to Haver, Montana, had a close ball game against MSU Northern before falling in that ball game. So both of these teams are uh, looking for their first win of the year. Uh, conference opener for both ball clubs. And of course, you look at the roster of Mayville State, it's something you haven't seen in quite some time. A lot of familiar names, especially on the offensive side in the skill position. Coach Stanton touched on that during the pregame show that uh, Coach Larson's just done an outstanding job in recruiting and keeping the kids around. And of course, uh, you know, you look at the roster for Mayville State, a lot of kids from the eastern part of the state, from Thompson uh, up into the Botno area, Grand Forks, Fargo, West Fargo. So uh, Coach Larson's done a nice job of recruiting into eastern North Dakota and retaining those kids throughout the years. Uh, got a couple of kids on the offensive side that have been starting for three years. Uh, their quarterback, Tim Salmon, a, an all-conference performer last year, did a nice job in his sophomore season back for his junior year, and he's got some skilled position players in Elijah Roundtree, Mal uh, Malika Flowers that have played a lot, uh, along with Javante Clayton. Uh, they've got uh, three wide receivers that Salmon's played a lot of football with, so look for Mayville State to do some things offensively with a veteran ball club for the Comets. Well, we're looking forward to Dickinson won the coin toss deferred, so maybe we'll receive the football. They'll move to the south end. It's uh, uh, military veterans and uh, first responders, uh, police and fire department. Dave, they were the honorary captains out at midfield uh, for the coin toss. We got the fire truck with the big walkway up and the American flag hanging off that. The sheriff and police cars on the hill across the way. Beautiful setting here. Big, big crowd, as there usually is at the back. The sweeps uppers. Level, mid-level are jam-packed. Probably too many people, but they're plumb full, so we're looking forward to it. And the ball is kicked towards the end zone by Chase Miller, and it will go in and out of the end zone. So we'll start with the line of scrimmage play instead of a kickoff return play as the Blue Hawks defense comes out and the Comets come out offensively. And Mayville State again, as Jim alluded to, led by Tim Salmon, who played as a freshman. Of course, was their go-to guy last year, and he's a junior this year, 6'3", 220 pounds, and uh, he is a good quarterback, and he'll get some things done, mainly with his arm, but also has the ability to uh, run the football, 6'3", and 220. The Comets, the white jerseys, blue pants, they'll break the huddle, and they'll go to work out the 25-yard line after the ball sailed into the end zone. So Mayville State's first possession, the Hawk set with Dennis Mathern, the All-American, and Matt Anderson out of Jamestown up front in that defensive alignment. Again, some movement in the D-line. They reset. Salmon, a long count. There's this clap of the hands. There's the fake of the ball. It's going to go out in the wide side. And the Mayville bench, a pickup of about three out to the 28 as they swing it out there on the right-hand side. And coming up with the catch that time, looks like number two uh, for the uh, Comets. That is Kelly Azur, and that, I believe, is the tight end. So that'll be a pickup on the play. Let's call it uh, three yards to the 28, and it'll bring up a second down and seven. And the Comets also have uh, some veteran leadership up front, three juniors and a senior, along with one freshman in that starting offensive line. So they've got some continuity up front as well as the skill positions. Salmon again, this time, works out of the shotgun. Now they switch to the pistol and ready to go to work. Dropping back two steps, Salmon looks, looks. He's going to be hit. Ball comes loose. It's picked up by Mayville State. Good pressure by the Blue Hawks. Salmon got hit from behind, it popped out of there, and then recovering the football down there, I think, was one of the wide receivers, or maybe have been even after uh, the tight end. Let's take a look. Looks like number 22 may be on top of that. That would be Neville, the running back. So he got on top of it and ends up being a pickup, uh, or no, a loss of a yard on the play. So a one-yard loss on the fumble recovery by Mayville State. Crew Mathern just came from the... Uh left side of the defensive front as Salmon was looking to his left. Uh, Mathern able to get the ball knocked away and uh, Salmon dropped it, but fortunately for the Comets, Neville, the running back, able to pick it up and the Comets retain possession and it's a third down and eight. Back to pass, Salmon needs to get to the 35, all kinds of time across the middle, but goes too high that time. The intended receiver downfield for Mayville State, Javon Davidson, the freshman wide receiver, and it sails over his end. So the Comets will go three and out against this Dickinson State defense, and the Hawks will get the football back. 
Davison was open across the 30 yard line or across the 35 yard line, but Salmon just threw it a little bit over his head. If he'd have gotten the completion, it would have been a first down, but it's a three and out for the Comets on their initial possession of the afternoon. Caden Koontz looks like will drop back. Well, let's double check that. Koontz usually a returner. Now it looks like maybe number 14, Kel Gundach, maybe, oh, Gunlack may be deep back to receive for Dickinson State. He's standing back at about his own 44, 43 yard line. High snap, a very high end over end kick, not very deep. It'll hit right about the 50, but it takes a good bounce on the turf in the Dickinson State Territory. Be down at the 44 yard line. And yes, that was a kill. Gunlack, the freshman out of Great Falls, back to return the punt, but there was no return. They'll put it right at the 45, so DSU will go to work for their first offensive series at their own 45 for Dickinson State. And of course, some skill on this DSU offense. Will Madler was just outstanding last week in his debut. Noah Sickler, 10 catches, 165 yards, two touchdowns. Caden Koontz and uh, the running back, Braden Zurup, had big receiving days, each with five catches uh, in the game. And, of course, uh, Zurup was their leading rusher, the uh, senior out of New Salem High School, and uh, he'll be at the running back position. They'll put the man in motion into the backfield. Dickinson State will, and they'll set in that formation. Sickler comes wide. There's the handoff, the fake of the handoff. They get it out to the tight end. That's Gabe Batley. Bratley's got all kinds of room, powers his way down to about the 41-yard line of Mayville State. And that'll be a nice little swing pass to the tight end. 14 yards on the play, first down, Dickinson State. That was Schumacher, the second oh, Schumacher. tight end, as they went with the double tight end formation that time. Just got Schumacher op open in the plant, and Madler just a little flip of the wrist and a nice gain and a first down into Mayville State territory down at the 41-yard line. So pick up of about 14 on the first play of the game for Dickinson State. Uh, Schumacher, 49, Brantley, 89. I had an eight instead of four in front of him. Now Madler looking back. He wants a timeout, not quite sure what the uh, problem was. Dickinson State took the time out. I think they had some confusion as they uh, came out with a different set as they went with three wide receivers to the right. And I don't think they had the personnel out there that they wanted, so they got the time out rather than get the delay game penalty. All right, so we'll just keep it right here on this break. It'll be a quick break. And now, of course, we were talking before the game. We wonder with the heat around 90, and it's probably going to get warmer, and it's probably about... I don't know, 10 to 15 degrees warmer on the turf than it is uh, away from the turf. So we may have some water break type of timeouts here. We've had that in high school games. We had a Thursday night here at the back with Dickinson I, last night with Dickinson Trinity. And again, the uh, Blue Hawks coming up to go to work again. Uh, I'm round head coach Pete Stanton, of course, visiting out there. As we mentioned, Dickinson State 0 1, Mayville State 0 and 1. Our officiating crew, Reed Flaggen, a uh, North Star officiating referee with the Bismarck Mandan crew here to working the ball game today. These guys work Northern Sun and uh, also North Star football games. They get a lot of Saturdays and many Saturdays off this crew. There's one other crew out of Bismarck that also works a considerable amount of games. And Dickinson State will break the huddle. Sickler and Koontz will go wide to the far side, to the near side. Now they're going to put the man back in the slot for Dickinson State University. Now they're going to split out all wide. The presentation transfer, Cam Shepard. And they're looking that way. Now they go out in the flat. They've got wide open on the flat that time. Bowden. And I got that right now. It's not Bowden. It's Bowden. So we got that situation straight out. But we got a flag down. So let's hold on. It looks like it's going to go against Dickinson State. Pickup was down to about the 31 close to first down yardage. Offensive pass interference. Okay where that came but let's take a look here and see if we can catch it on the replay what well, they're not going to you know, then of course it's maybe away from the football but offensive pass interference on Dickinson State so it'll bring up a second down they'll move it all the way back to the 44 or make it yeah, 44 yard line of DSU so that puts it back 10 yards and the Blue Hawks will look at a first down and 25 so first and 25 for the Blue Hawks again twin receivers right and left lone running back again is Zuroff. There's the drop back. Zuroff flakes out of the backfield. The ball batted down. Good pressure up front. Break number 48 for the Mayville State defense came flying in that time. And he got a hand on the ball. That's Jared Gay, 5'11", 271, and batted it down. So it goes incomplete. Well, good defensive pressure by the Comets up front. Second down now and 25. 
for the Blue Hawks at their own 44-yard line. No score just underway. Two and a half minutes into the ball game. Mabel Stent went three and out. Mandler all kinds of time. Little inside slant to Koontz, and that was read well by the Comets. They were not fooled on that. And in there making the play again, guess who? Number 48, Jared Gay. So Gay having a great start defensively. That's a catch for Koontz and a loss of one yard on the play. And good coverage by the cornerback, Will Flemons, as he read that right away and fed it right back to the inside where Gay was able to make the stop, and it'll be a third down and long for the Hawks. I don't know what kind of play you got on third and 26, but the Blue Hawks are going to have to see if they've got something in the playbook. Coach McCarville and Coach Statton back to pass Madler all kinds of time. He goes across the middle, and he throws it right into the hands of the defensive back. That's going to be picked off at the 40 and inside the 35 and bringing it down inside the 35 to the 30, number three for Mayville State. Anthony Johnson with the INT, and boy, he was like a receiver. Madler threw it right to him, and Johnson comes up with the INT. And the comments in business in Dickinson State territory as they'll put the football down at the 31-yard line. So a return of about 20 yards after the interception by Anthony Johnson and Mayville State takes over on the first turnover of the football game and it comes from Dickinson State University. And I think if you're Will Madler, he's probably thinking that, that that was not a smart choice because they had triple coverage on the intended receiver. They had a bracketed on either side and then the linebacker underneath and he just jumped the route and got the pick and had a nice return from about their own 45 to the Dickinson State 30 yard line and the Comets knocking on the door here after the turnover and just three and a half minutes into this first quarter. 11.35 left to go. Mayville State offensively three and out. Dickinson State turns it over on their first possession so we remain scoreless. The ball again at the 30 yard line of Dickinson State University. So a couple of good standout defensive plays. A couple by Gay for the Comets and one by Johnson. Turned the tide a bit here early in the ball game as the wind out of the southwest at about 15 to 20 and it's around 90 degrees boy the sky is a pretty blue and we don't have hardly any haze or smoke today hanging around mayville state breaks the huddle in that backfield for the comets right now number 22 danny neville at running back at quarterback it'll be tim salmon so salmon again will work with uh, Neville behind him, and again, a long count by Salmon out of that sideline break. Here's a handoff to Neville up the middle, gets to the 29, and then fights forward to about the 28, and there's about six <laughs> blue jerseys. Anybody could be credited for that tackle. A lot of blue on top of that, and it'll be a pickup of two on the play for Neville. So to bring up a second down and eight at the DSU 28-yard line. Mayville State, of course, got shut out last week, so they're looking for their first points of the season today, and they've got an opportunity here after the turnover at the Blue Hawk 28-yard line. Again, Salmon barks out those signals, claps the hands. There's the snap. Neville again gets the call. Neville again in all kinds of bump. Let's check if that's a new back. Nothing doing there. Number 14 into the ballgame. Davidson, wide receiver. Now a play comes down. The loss was all the way back from the 28 to the 40-yard line. That'll be a loss of 12 on the play. But let's wait and see what the call is. Well, on that time, Salmon went in motion out to the slot position to the left side, and they went with a little wildcat. Yep. Well, another tough penalty on Dickinson State is a, a face mask penalty, and that'll give the comments a first down as they'll go back to the line of scrimmage and march off the 15 yards and the Comets will be in the red zone inside the 15 down to the 14. So Mayville State has it at the DSU 14 yard line after the face mask. The loss on the play was 14 the penalty 15 and Mayville State wins that battle so it's at the DSU 14 first and 10 for Mayville State University. Again Salmon ready the count coming there's the clap of the hands now salmon will put his man neville to his right and a little shift in motion and there's the uh, handoff neville to the outside turns the corner he's got some positive yardage down near the 10 yard line before he is run out of bounds so let's see where they spot it down at maybe closer to the nine so let's give him neville a pickup of six on the play and it will bring up a second down and four at the nine of dickinson state university so mayville state in the red zone on second and four at the Blue Hawk five-yard line. Dickinson State sets with that front of Mattern, Dennis, and Anderson, Matt Anderson. We'll see Eaton in there, Dahlgren a bit, wide Anderson. There'll be seven guys, eight guys that they rotate in and out. But right now, 
The guys in there are trying to focus on a stop here while Mayville State trying to focus on getting some things going. That time straight up the middle. Neville maybe. Well, I don't know if he got any forward progress or not. Line of scrimmage to nine, and I think that's where they keep it. So no gain for Neville on the play. No loss, no gain, and it'll bring up a third down, and let's call it four, well, maybe four and a half. We'll call it third, four and a half at the nine-yard line of Dickinson State. Nine and a half minutes left to go. First quarter, no score. Dickinson State and Mayville State. Comets run a quick shift in. A new player comes into the ball game. Number 24 for the Comets. Uh, Marcellus Moore, it looks like, checking into the ball game. Oh, number 74, big uh, tackle checking in. Grant Kocher, a junior offensive lineman, comes in. He'll work at the right tackle. Neville to the left of Salmon. Again, Blue Hawks look like they might come here. They do come. Salmon looks towards the end zone. Back on the coverage and overthrows everybody. That'll be incomplete. As Dickinson State, good coverage down in the corner of the end zone. Jared Hartwell, who had an interception last week in Billings against Rocky Mountain, on the coverage, and it'll bring up the field goal unit out. And Mayville State will try to grab the first points of the ball game here against Dickinson State. Yeah, Mayville State that time was just trying to throw it up, give uh, Davison a chance in the end zone, but the ball thrown a little bit too far to the outside, and Hartwell with the good coverage results in an incompletion, and it'll be a 25-yard field goal for Mayville State. Okay, field goal attempt upcoming for the Comets. As they will do the honors here, and uh, let's see what they do with it. 15, a little bit of a high snap, kick is down, looks good, did it split the upright? It did. It is up and good. So the kick up and good for Mayville State. Brayden Lacombe, the sophomore, puts it through. And Mayville State jumps out to an early 3-0 lead over Dickinson State, taking advantage of the Madler interception and turning it into a six-play, 30-yard drive. And they take the lead over DSU on the CHI St. Alexia South scoreboard. 3-0 back with the Comets kickoff to the Blue Hawks. We'll do it in 30 seconds on KDIX. Rivera's more than a bank. We're a group of people in the business of helping communities forge on. At the counter, we offer convenience so the day can forge on. In the thick of the hall, we protect your peace of mind so the season can forge on. And around the table, we make room for everyone so life can forge on. We're more than a bank. We're your path ahead. Rivera, forge your path. With you again, that drive after the Madler uh, pick by Mayville Saints, Anthony Johnson. Six plays, 30 yards, a field goal again of 25 yards by Lacombe. Braden Lacombe and the 5'10 sophomore hits it and puts Mayville State out in front, three to nothing. Lacombe again uh, puts the Comets points on the board. Again, shut out last week, but today they score first and get three points on the board. Back deep to receive will be Gunlack, the freshman from Great Falls, Caden Kuntz, the senior from Dickinson Trinity, back deep, and Kuntz is going to field it right at the 10-yard line. He's back to the 15, cuts across the 20, and trying to get to the corner, gets outside to about the 25, and to the 30, and he'll be run out of bounds. Boy, almost a late hit there by Mayville State, but no flag comes down. Hope Kuntz can get up and be okay. Got I think most of the contact was he ran into one of his own players on the sidelines as he got pushed out. So that'll be a nice return from the 10 back to the 33, and DSU go to work first and 10 at their own 33, trailing on the CHI St. Alexia South scoreboard, 3 to nothing. Madler and Zeroff in the backfield. Madler at quarterback. Zeroff, your running back. There's a fake to Zeroff. They're looking deep. They're going to go deep downfield. They're going for Kuntz. Kuntz trying to catch up with it, but he cannot. Madler put a lot of air in it, but just overthrew him by about two, three yards, going for the home run ball, and it goes incomplete, and it'll bring up a second down situation. So second down for Dickinson State and 10. Two of five now for Madler for a total in this ball game uh, for Dickinson State. It's about three yards, or 14 yards, excuse me, and no touchdowns in, one interception. So second and 10 at the 33. Fake them, Zuroff, back to pass. Zuroff stays in the black. Now they're going for Sickler. Sickler back downfield. He's going to be batted around incomplete, and pass interference will be the call. Sickler went up between the double team and just about had it, but got grabbed down right before he went up in the air. And Mayville State, again, will pick up the pass interference, and uh, Dickinson State will have a first down. Uh, for the Blue Ox. Sickler last week not only had 10 catches, he had three pass interference calls against him by Rocky Mountain defenders in that ball game. So 
He has had just a great start to the season. So pass interference gives the Blue Hawks uh, their first or second first down of the football game. And Dickinson State will go to work first and 10 at the, uh, let's call it the 48-yard line, their own 48-yard line. Again, Madler back to pass. Madler 10, and he's going to be sacked all the way back at the 38-yard line. Let's get a number on that. And back there, number 34 for the Comets pouring in. Uh, Brady De La Rock came in and made the sack, and that is a minus 10 in the rush category. Uh, let's make it a minus 9, back to the 39 and third and long again for Dickinson State. And again, they were just looking deep downfield. The offensive line couldn't hold off the Comets and able to get in, get the sack. So third down and 19, Mandler again quickly ready, scrambles around, looking downfield, still looking. He's going to fire it out there. He's got his receiver. Out at midfield, and that looks like maybe Schumacher again, the tight end, at about the, uh, let's call it 49, 50-yard line. I think that was Schumacher. He comes up with the catch, and that will be a pickup on the play of 11 yards, but not enough for a first down, so the Hawks will have to punt it back to the Comets, trailing 3 to nothing on the CHI. St. Alexia sells scoreboard, or make it third down, excuse me. So third down. And again, that pass interference call gave him an extra down. So third down and eight at the 50 for the Blue Hawks. Brantley this time, the tight end goes to motion. Now we got penalty flags. Mayville State now wants a timeout, so we'll do the same. With seven minutes, 37 seconds remaining to play. Before the end of the first quarter, Mayville State maintaining that slim lead. It's the Comets three. The Blue Hawks nothing. We'll come back. Third and eight for Dickinson State at midfield after this 30-second timeout on KMAV Mayville. KPIX Dickinson and Consolidated Live TV back in a half minute. Consolidated handles um, not only our phone service, our internet, our, um, our Wi-Fi, but they also handle our, as of lately, they took on our IT support and our cybersecurity. So, it was exactly what we needed. Um, it's been great. We haven't had any issues, but um, that, that is a good peace of mind when I leave and go home and knowing that my business, my customer information, everything is secure and I don't have to worry about that. HI, St. Alexio South scoreboard. Dickinson State in the comments, both in search of that first victory. And Mayville State's defense shining right now in the first quarter. They've had a couple of sacks. They have had a interception, and that has set up Mayville State's lead. Shepard and Kuntz come wide to the near side. Sickler, lone to the far side. Brantley will go in the slot. Zuroff remains in the backfield with Madler. Madler, three of six for 25 yards in the one interception here in the first quarter. He rolls to his left. He looks downfield. He's got all kinds of time. He's going to fire across the middle. He's got the receiver down there. Noah Sickler comes up with it at the 28-yard line of Mayville State. So that'll be a pickup of 22 yards to Sickler's favorite receiver, Noah Sickler. And Sickler comes up with his first catch of the ball game and a first down for Dickinson State. And Sickler did a nice job of making sure to get his body between the football and the defender and just squared up and made a nice leaping catch. And the Hawks with another first down inside the 30-yard line of Mayville State. Again, they're off the running back. He's going to get his first call. Nope, he's not. They're going to go inside. There's Sickler again, and he's inside the 20, and he's going to be brought down at about the 20-yard line. They'll put it right at the 20. And Sickler again with another catch. That one, a catch of eight yards. And it'll bring up a second down and two for Dickinson State. And Dickinson State's gone exclusively through the air here in the early going. We'll see what Coach McCarville has dialed up on this second down and a yard. Kuntz in motion to the left, comes back to the right. There's going to be the first carry by Zuroff. He's got a hold. He's at the 15. He's at the 10. He's inside the 10. He's down to the 7-yard line. Great job up front by that line. Great cut back by Zuroff. They'll put it at the 8. That'll be a pickup of 12 for Zuroff on the play. And a first down for the Blue Hawks. Their fourth first down of the football game. And the Hawks going quickly as they already snap the football. Give it to Zuroff. Zuroff outside and he'll walk into the end zone. Boy, he likes playing Mayville State. He's had some great games against the Comets in his first two touches. Go for 12 and 8 on a touchdown run. And Zuroff into the end zone. So Braden Zuroff, Dickinson State's first two rushing plays. And it's a touchdown run for Zuroff of 8 yards. And Dickinson State out in front, 6-3 to three with the PAP attempt up and coming on the CHI. St. Alexios Health scoreboard. Zuroff did a nice job of 
faking into the line and then breaking it out to the left and there was nobody out there and an easy walk in touchdown for the junior out of new or the senior out of new salem Chase miller hits the pat and dickinson state moves out in front seven to three on the chi state alexia's health scoreboard for dickinson state that was a drive of nine plays and it covers a total of 67 yards and the Blue Hawks out in front 7-3. to three. We'll come back with the Hawks kickoff to the Comets uh, with 6-10 remaining to play here in the first quarter. Dickinson State 7 and Mayville State 3. We're back in 30. Banking is some of the most important things in your life and banking at the right bank is very important. We're really proud of our bank because we have great people and our people are what make our bank go. We always want to treat our customers right and do the best job we can for them. And try to do things to help make our communities better. Yards and the Blue Hawks on the Zeroff York touchdown run of eight yards. Lead it now by a score after the PAT by Miller by a score of seven to three. Six ten left to go first quarter. Again, Chase will approach the ball. He'll kick it. This is a boomer. Let's see if it'll carry into the end zone. It does, and they're going to bring it out. So they'll bring it out from two yards deep, bring it across the 10 to the 15, and still on his feet at the 15, across the 15 to the 20, and finally run out of bounds over there for Mayville State. Now we got a late flag, number 14. Again, on the return, that was uh, Johnson, I do believe, or Davidson, Davidson excuse me, on the return. Davidson on the See what the flag is about. So maybe the state will have possession either at the 20, back a bit, or forward a bit, depending upon who the penalty was on. Not quite sure. Flags at about, well, way down at the head of where the ball was put down at the 20. It was at back at the 26. Here we go. Reed Flogg and our referee will signal up to us. So they'll add the penalty or put the ball back. It was against the return team, I think, a legal block on the personal foul. So that'll put it back to about. It was the... a post possession. It oh, okay. A, it was a personal foul after the uh, return was completed. And so they'll take it from the you end know, of the return and go half the distance of the goal. So it'll be inside the 10 at the nine yard line. So maybe we'll start at their own nine with 6 3 remaining to play here. In the first quarter, Dickinson State 7 and Mayville State 3. Comets will break the huddle. A little solo receiver to the left, moving to the south end here. Twins to the right side. Salmon again in the backfield. Long count by Tim again as he gets ready to go to work. About the five-yard line is where he's standing in behind the uh, center. And there's a quick flat across the middle. Tipped in the air and nearly picked off three Blue Hawks diving for it. Nobody could get to it. I think the intended receiver, Malik Flowers, that time, but he was covered well. It goes incomplete. It'll bring up a second down and 10 for the Comets. Hartwell just jumped the route, got a hand on it, tipped it up in the air, but fortunately for the Comets, it landed on the green as no Blue Hawk could come up and make the catch after the tip. So second down and 10 for the Comets at their own nine-yard line. And long count by Salmon as he sets. They've slowed the pace a little bit from that uh, first couple of series they've had. Salmon finally gets the snap. There's a give straight ahead and not a whole lot doing from the 10 or from the 9, maybe out to about the 12. Pick up of about three on the play that time as they entangled on there. I think yeah, that was number eight, I do believe. Ullman now into the ball game. So Mason Ullman with the pickup. He'll pick up three on the rushing play and it'll bring up a Third down and seven for Mayville State on the ball again at the 12-yard line, their own 12-yard line. Movement there. I think Dickinson State jumped offside, but it's maybe a free play. And the pass is going to be down there, and Hartwell trying to come up with the INT could not. He was the guy closest to it, but I think the Blue Hawks jumped. I think number 42 for Dickinson State. That'll be Riley Waters, the linebacker, maybe went early, but he might have been drawn, so let's wait and see what the call is. Well, Salmon thought it was a free play as he just threw it up down the left sideline. No comment anywhere near it, but uh, the uh, penalty would go against Dickinson State. It'll be five yards and bring up the third down and short for the comments. So third and two. Good read by Salmon. He saw that, so he said, well, we've got a free one. Let's just go for the home run, and he overthrew it, and he knew even if uh, Hartwell picked it off, it was going to come back. So now third and two. 
for Mayville State at the 18 of Dickinson State. So both teams being plagued a bit by penalties here in game two. You expect that a little bit in game one, but we've had quite a few here in game two both ways here in the first quarter. 7-3 lead, Dickinson State back to pass. Salmon across the middle. He's got his receiver across the 20 at the 22. That'll be enough for first down yardage. A pickup on the play as Johnson will haul that one in, or Davidson, excuse me, hauls that one in. So Davidson comes up with the catch and go from the 28 to the 32 yard or 22 yard line, 18 to the 32, a four yard reception, two of five now for seven yards passing in the ball game for Salmon for Mayville State, their third first down of the first quarter. First and 10, again at the 22 of Dickinson State, 452 left to go. In quarter number one, 7-3 lead for Dickinson State. Salmon, long count by Tim. Again, gets it off as the play clock goes under 10. Again, out in the flat, he's got a receiver, and they're going to run him out of bounds after a pickup about five, maybe six yards. Way across the way that time. And again, it is Davidson coming up with the catch. So Davidson comes up with the catch to the 28-yard uh, line. That'll be a pickup of five. Salmon, three of six now for 12 yards passing. It'll bring up a second down and four at the 27 of Mayville State. Yeah, it looks like Ullman will stay in the backfield for Mayville State. And Salmon sets it, trips near side. They go with the fake near side. They go out field, and it's going to be a cut back and nothing doing there. Good read that time by Dickinson State. That time coming up, uh, making the hit for Dickinson State, that outside That's linebacker, and it'll be a loss of a yard on the catch. Or no, a gain of about a yard. Nope, they say a loss back to the 27. So actually no loss, no gain on that little swing pass. Well, they just had trips to the right side of the formation, had the receiver drop behind the other two and throw it out there. Basically, uh, it's kind of a screen situation, but Dickinson State read it well and dropped the receiver right as he caught it in a loss of a yard. Again, good coverage out there by number 42 for Dickinson State. Wilders and McCormick also in there. And again, there's some movement in that defensive front for Dickinson State. They just about jumped off sides. Now let's see what have we got. Mayville State wants another timeout. Their second timeout of play, the quarter. So play clock was running out. Play clock was running out. Salmon's been taking a lot of time. Well, we'll join the Comets. They've taken a couple of timeouts here. Uh, Dickinson State's taken one. We've had three timeouts in the first quarter. 319 left to go. Quarter number one. Dickinson State seven. Mayville State three. We come back. Third down and seven for the comments at their own 27. We'll tell you about it in 30 seconds. Alexi Hotel scoreboard. Comets will break away. Blue Hawks already set out there. Mattering in there for Dickinson State. Also in that front, Austin Dennis up front for Dickinson State. They get ready to go to work. The Blue Hawks set with that three man front, bring a couple of linebackers up, four secondary men. Again, Salmon ready after the timeout on third down and seven. And again, ready to go to work. Dickinson State, they drop back to the Comets. All kinds of pressure in the screen pass again. Forced a little early. Good pressure that time by Dickinson State. And I think again, this might have been Brooks Telbert, the uh, junior linebacker, the so or sophomore linebacker, Jim, getting good pressure on. And Salmon simply had the screen set up, but had to get rid of it way before he wanted to. Blue Hawks brought a couple of linebackers right up the middle and they were able to break free and Salmon didn't even have time to look ahead to see if his receiver was open and just threw it at his feet for the incompletion and it'll force another punt for the Comets. So Mayville State will drop back to punt. The Comets, of course, will put Caden Johnson, the junior, back to do the punting. Again, back deep to receive. It looks like Gunlack will be back deep off the side of his foot. Terrible punt. And that's going to carry into the Dickinson State bench. Let's see where they'll bring it in. The line of scrimmage was a 27. And let's see, they're going to come all the way up the sideline. They'll put it down at the 45-yard line. So that's an 18-yard punt. So Dickinson State will go to work at the Mayville State 
45 yard line, leading 7 to 3. They'll take over with 3.09 left to go in the first quarter. The Blue Hawks in the lead. A Braden Zuroff touchdown run of 8 yards and a PAT by Miller put the Hawks up after they fell behind. Mayville 3 to nothing. So Dickinson State again ready to go to work on the CHI St. Alexis Tell scoreboard. Brantley, the tight end, goes into the slot. He goes left to right. And again, the twin receiver set right. Solo left. There's a handoff up to Miller and a guy that's pretty healthy now. Brown on the run. He didn't get to play much last week. was kind of nursing that sore hamstring. And Pete said he's about 100% now. So Brown will go. Do we have a flag down? No, we do not. So Brown rushes for about, well, let's call it six yards. So a nice run by Brown. It'll bring up a second down and four for Dickinson State at the Mayville State 39-yard line. Again, Dickinson State leading 7-3. Now we got flags down as Madler dropping back to pass with legal procedure against Dickinson State. So we'll start all over again. Just looking down here, and just a great crowd. Everybody, well, there's some out in the sun, a few getting back in the shade. All I know is, Jim, I'm glad we're where we're at. Nice air-conditioned press box here, so we're doing okay. And the ball back to the 44-yard line. So it'll be a second down now and nine after the motion penalty by Dickinson State. Madler puts Koontz in motion. He's going to run the jet sweep to Koontz. Koontz breaks the tackle at the 40. He's outside to the 35, down to the 34. I think he got enough for first down yardage. So Caden Koontz will go for 10 yards on the play. Nice run by Koontz on that jet sweep, and the Hawks have another first down, first and 10 for Dickinson State. And good lead blocking that time by the running back, Darian Brown, as well as the tight end uh, for Dickinson State, Galen Brantley. Again, they go to work. Brown again on the carry, goes from the... Uh, 39 down to about the 37-yard line. So again, a pickup of two for Brown on the play. And Dickinson State looking at a second down and eight. Hawks have now rushed for 23 yards in this football game. A pass for 55. Madler back to pass. He's got some time. He steps up. He's got a man wide open. Guess who it is again? There he is. Noah Sickler coming up with the catch. Sickler, his third catch already in this first quarter. And that will be a pickup. Again, all the way down, and that'll be a pickup of 11 yards on the reception by Sickler. Six first down for Dickinson State. First and 10 at the 21 for the Blue Ox. They go in a hurry. Madler gets it to Brown. Brown cuts back, breaks the tackle, keeps his feet, fights down to the 16, and Brown will pick up a pickup of five on the play, and it'll bring up a second down and five for Dickinson State. Madler with that last completion. And the passing department now six of nine for a total of 66 yards. No touchdowns, one interception. So second down and five at the 18 of Mayville for the Blue Hawks. 55 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Dickinson State seven and Mayville State three. Comments will set. They'll come with a five-man front on this play. Now we've got flags down again. And Madler knows somebody was in motion, kind of swings around kind of disgustedly as the Hawks move the ball pretty nicely. But just being slowed down by penalties here. In this first quarter, both them and Mayville. Kind of uncharacteristic, but that's what's happening. A lot of yellow flags, a lot of laundry on the field both ways in this first quarter. And of course, Dickinson State early on had that pass interference penalty that uh, took away a first down and uh, really backed them up on their first possession of the ball game. And now Dickinson State with a couple of procedure penalties on this drive. So again, coming out wide to the near side for Dickinson State. Bridger Groveman, backup quarterback, playing as a wide receiver. He joins Kuhn. Sickler goes wide to the far side. Groveman goes in motion. They drop back. They're looking out in the flat. They're going. They got a man wide open down inside the 10, down to the five-yard line for Dickinson State. That's Zuroff, I do believe. Yep, Braden Zuroff with the catch. He came out of the backfield from the 18 down to the three-yard line, a 15-yard reception by Zuroff. That's one of those staple plays that Dickinson State has had in forever as they just get that running back out of the backfield and have him go up the sideline. First and goal, the ball spotted at the three-yard line again on the carry, trying to get to the end zone, but no way that time for Zuroff. He'll pick up a yard on the play, but Mayville State have that one snipped out, so it'll be a pickup of a yard down to the two-yard line, and it'll bring up a, a second down and a goal, and we have the quarter coming to an end. So the Hawks will come back, leading 7-3 to three on the CHI. St. Alexia Town scoreboard, Mayville State trailing Dickinson State. We'll be back on Consolidated Live TV, KMAV, and KDIX. We'll be back in 60 seconds. I wonder how much my car is worth. I just don't drive it anymore. Dan Porter Motors will buy it. 
I'm tired of my old car. I just want something different. Dan Porter Motors will buy it. What about boats and campers? Dan Porter Motors will buy it. Now, for a limited time, Dan Porter Motors will give you the most for your car, boat, pickup, camper, motorcycle, jet ski, tractor. You get the picture. Just stop in, give them the keys, and they'll write you a check. It's that simple. See Dan Porter Motors, 58601. Big Boy Toys. All right, back with you. It'll be second and goal at the two-yard line for Dickinson State. Again, coming in motion, Koontz, and they're going to fake it. Nope, they're going to go to Koontz with the jet sweep, and Koontz will dive into the end zone. So, Caden Koontz, on a 15-yard carry earlier, he goes on the jet sweep, a two-yard TD run for Koontz, and Dickinson State moves out in front by a score of 13-3 to with the PAT attempt upcoming. That time, a nine-play drive for Dickinson State, 45 yards. They just ran Kuntz in motion. He went from the right slot, went all the way across the formation, and then on the snap, came back to the right side, got the handoff, and ducked in for the touchdown as Dickinson State takes the 13-3 lead just three seconds into quarter number two. So the PAT attempt up and coming for Dickinson State. Madler will hold. Chase Miller will kick. It is up, and it is good. So Dickinson State... Moves out in front, 14 to three. That score coming with 14.57 left to go in the first half. And the Blue Hawks on the CHI St. Alexia Hotel scoreboard lead it after a nine play 45 yard drive capped by Kate Koontz and a jet sweep. A two yard touchdown run for the wide receiver. Blue Hawks 14 and Mayville State three. We'll be back with the Hawks kickoff to the Comets. We'll do it for you in 30 seconds on Katie Hawks, KMAV and Consolidated. Challenges and struggles are part of everyday life for all of us. At Infinity Real Estate Group, we don't back down and we take it all in stride. Okay, don't move, I've done this oh, before. Oh, oh, oh. My turn, my turn. In these struggles, there are no mistakes, only life lessons. We may not be that good at some things, but we do excel in real estate. We are Infinity Real Estate Group. Experience the Infinity way. We'll approach the kickoff to the south end. This one's going to sail into the end zone, and it'll sail out of the end zone for Mayville State. And they'll come out to work at their own 25. Now through uh, the first quarter, Dickinson State, 31 yards uh, rushing, 81 yards passing. Madler, 7 of 10. No touchdowns, an interception for 81 yards, 7 first downs. Uh, for Mayville State, 8 yards rushing, 4 of 8 for Sam, and 12 yards and 3 first downs. They have not turned the football over. So Dickinson State... In uh, total yardage in the uh, first quarter, had 112 total yards. Mayville State had a total of 20 total yards in the first quarter. Dickinson State sets defensively. Again, looking into that defensive lineup and again for the Blue Hawks. Double check that front again. I see Mattern maybe getting a breather on this defensive series. They got some good depth up there. Pressure going to be put on from behind and Salmon hits just as he threw it. Good coverage downfield that time by Dickinson State. Looks like maybe number 20. Is that Kistler that came over and made the hit? We'll check it out momentarily here for Dickinson State, but a good hit and good pressure by the Blue Hawks also. And a good open field tackle on Kip by Kistler. If he doesn't make the tackle, there's a lot of green to the right side. And I made a short gain instead of a long gain for Mayville State. Five of 19 now in the passing department. 15 yards for Salmon. Second and seven at the Mayville State, their own 28-yard line. Salmon again will shift his running back to his side after moving him from behind him. And there's going to be the handoff on the left side and on the carry for the Comets that time. There's a running back, Neville, and he'll go for a short gain on the play. 
pickup of a yard for Neville, and it'll bring up a third down and long. Third and about six for Mayville State at the 29. Neville will pick up one yard on that run. Third down and six. Twin sets right below us to the right for Mayville State. Solo to the left. That might be Davidson over on the far side. He's caught a couple of balls in this first half. Salmon again. Need some positive things here. Did the Hawks go offside? I believe they did. So again, he's got a free play. He's just going to fire it down there. And on the coverage for Dickinson State, downfield Cooper McLaughlin. And I think the Hawks were offside, if I'm not mistaken. That would have been, I think, that's that the third time they've been offside defensively. They've got a lot of flags against him in this first half. But let's wait and see. The pass was incomplete. Hawks will shift again. Some people in and out. Matter and back in there. Number 75, Matt Anderson out at Jamestown High School. Had the pressure on that time. Offsides again, Dickinson State. So again, it was a free play. So it'll bring up a third down and one. They declined that. Then there oh, was a okay. second flag that was roughing the passer. So they're going to decline the offside, take the roughing the passer, get 15 and a first down, and it'll go all the way out to the 44-yard line. You know, I don't know when you're like Matt Anderson, about 280 pounds, and you're right a foot away from the quarterback just as he releases and you go into him. I don't know how you cannot hit him, and I don't know sometimes why you're penalized for that, but he was. So it'll be a first down, fourth first down, so first and 10. Uh, at the 44-yard line of Mayville State. But the official made the call, and the call will stand, and Salmon will go back to work. You see that a lot. And again, on the left side, on the carry, Neville got nowhere, and he's going to be dropped for a loss. Good read. Coming up defensively that time, uh, Chris Kitzler again, who's made a couple of nice plays. That'll be a loss back to the 41, a three-yard loss on the play. So it'll bring up a second and 13 for Mayville State. So second and 13, the ball back at the 41 of Mayville State. So the Blue Hawks will reset that defensive unit. Mayville State will put a couple of guys out wide to the right side. The far out guy, Clayton, for the Comets. Coming to the near side, the stand side here will be Davidson for Mayville State. Again, Neville in the backfield. Salmon, your quarterback, barking out signals. They put a man in the slot this time. So a second down and 13. Again, Salmon back to pass across the middle. A little too high, but that was a catchable ball. It went right in and out of the hands of Zyler Carlson, a freshman wide receiver. Definitely a catchable ball. Just couldn't bring it back to the body. 5 of 10 now for 15 yards passing for Salmon. That would have been a good gain as it was inside the Dickinson State 45-yard line. It would have had a first down yardage into Dickinson State territory, but instead it's going to be a third down and long. 14 Dickinson State, 3 Mayville State, 12.47 remaining to play. First half here at a very sweltering Bijou Activity Center in Dickinson, North Dakota. Southwest wind 10 to 15. Nothing but sunshine and blue skies and heat. And it's a lot warmer probably than that 90 degrees on the playing field right now. Back to pass some pressure again. Salmon steps away from it. There's our first. ENG lending sack of the ball game. It's as easy as four, five, six. Your area's number one choice for home loans. Phone four, five, six loan or on the web at four, five, six loan.com. ENG, your area's number one choice for home loans. And guess who? Crew Mather in the All American Dickinson High product is. He came around the outside, Salmon broke loose on the initial pressure, but Mather able to wrap him up and drop him for a loss, and it'll be a fourth down and long inside their own 35-yard line, so the Comets unable to take advantage of that uh, personal foul penalty on Dickinson State and lost a couple of uh, plays that time and will punt the football back to the Hawks. Gunlock back deep to receive. He's going to watch that one sail towards the Mayville sideline. Takes a great bounce. Rolls inside the 35, inside the 30, and down to about the 24-yard line. So a nice job of punting that time. About a 42-yard punt. But the Comets now negative yard and rushing after that sack. A minus one, just 15 yards passing. They've picked up four first downs. But the Blue Hawks defense, uh, when they're not hurt by penalties, has stood up pretty strong here in this ball game, and now the Comets uh, will set defensively as the Blue Ox offense comes out leading 14-3. to three. And the first time that the Comets punter has gotten off a clean punt and got a good roll and bounced down to the 24, so Dickinson State will have it there. Well, there's a flag, another one, well, guess what, another flag. I don't know, maybe we have to talk with these officials. We've had all kinds of flags, almost. Now this one, it goes against Mayville State. So they'll get 10 yards at the end of the kick. So instead of having it at the 24, it'll be out at the 34. Well, they moved it backwards. 
Must have been well, the ball went out of bounds at the 24. Yeah, and now they're at the 24. Mm. Okay. First down for either way, Dickinson State. Now out. they're marching it off. Okay, <laughs> I was thinking. Okay, there it is. Now they got it forward. They've had so many penalties, they got to figure out, okay, which way we going here? So that one, that one, and they've had it both ways. It hasn't been like one team's had more than the other. Both teams have just had a lot of yellow laundry against them. So DSC would take over at their own 34. 11.56 left to go, leading 14-3 to here in the first half. Again, Madler, he's been solid again, had the one pick, but other than that, has been pretty sharp. There's a handoff again, Zuroff up the middle, and a strong running back out of New Salem High School will pick up yardage Zuroff across the here. 35 to the 39. Give him five yards for Zuroff on the play. He rushed for 49 five, yards three, last week, uh, nine carries for Dickinson State, and he's had a good night tonight, four, or this afternoon, four carries now for 29 yards for Zuroff, second down and five for Dickinson State. Again, back to pass Madler, looking across the middle. He's got pressure, scrambles away from it. Still scrambling, still looking, and he's going to go down. But he made a wise choice. Last week, he had a couple of plays like that where he kind of threw it up for grabs and just threw it into the hands one time of the defender and nearly had the other one picked off today. He just alluded to once he couldn't get away taking the sack, and he'll lose some yardage uh, from the 39 back to about the 32. That's a seven-yard loss, so to bring up third and long for Dickinson State. And the Comets had great pressure, and Madler had to roll out to his left. Really didn't have an opportunity to square up and throw the football downfield. Madler rolls to his right, looking downfield, still looking, still looking. Now he's going to fire it across the middle, going for Sickler. Sickler's got it. Boy, he's going to be close to first down yardage. They needed 12. I think he got 13. Sickler, another great play coming back and then making a tough cut to 13-yard reception. And Dickinson State moves the chains. Eight of 11 now for Madler in the football game for a total of 95 yards, no touchdowns, and the one interception. And Dickinson State has their eighth first down, and they convert a third down. So first and 10 for Dickinson State at their own 45-yard line. There's a swing pass out to Schumacher, the tight end, and he'll go into Mayville State territory at the 47-yard line. Pickup of eight on the play for Schumacher on the reception. A nice little swing pass. Madler now over 100 yards passing in this first half, 103 yards passing, and it'll bring up a second down and two for the Hawks at the Mayville 47-yard line, leading 14-3. to Dickinson State over Mayville State. Again, Madler will put the man in motion, Schumacher, left to right to tight end, and they got a double slot. They take it to Duroff. Here comes the pressure. Madler spins away from it, hit as he throws it, and the pass is just going to go incomplete. He just got hit on the arm as he pass threw it. Complete. Well, I don't know. That's not a fumble. That's a pass. <laughs> the coaching staff from Mavo saying get on the ball, but it's an incomplete pass. He got the arm going forward and threw it downfield, so it'll be an incompletion. Not many for Madler. 9 of 13 now for 103. And uh, again, 0 on the TD, 1 on the INT, and another third down situation. Third and 2 for the Hawks at the Mayville 47. Zeroff will remain the running back. Where Dickinson State, Sickler and Kuntz will be your wideouts. They don't even go into the huddle. They just go out wide. And again, there's the quick Gibbs. They're off on the carry. Breaks a tackle. He fights forward. I don't think, well, maybe he did get it. They're going to say he got it with second Zuroff effort, but I think they blew him dead about a yard short. And they're going to give him a yard pickup for Zuroff on the play, going to that left side. So Zuroff will pick up one yard on the play on his fifth carry. And he'll bring up fourth and one at the 46. And the Hawks look like they're going to maybe punt the football away, so Groven will check into the ball game. Hawks lead it 14 to 3, 9:26 remaining to play, and Groven standing back at about his 40-yard line. So the Blue Hawks again giving the appearance that they're going to punt the football. We see, let's see if they do on fourth and one. Again, Groven back at his 40-yard line. Good snap, and he's going to punt it away. There's the punt, high and over end punt going to carry down inside the 20 at the 18-yard line. Fair caught there uh, by Mayville State. The catch made by Danzel Navy and Mayville State's defense comes up with a big stop on fourth and one. The Hawks elect to punt it and the ball will go back to Mayville State. They trail Dickinson State on the CHI St. Alexios Health scoreboard by a margin of 14-3. to three. So Dickinson State again Sets up defensively, and Mayville State goes to work on the offensive side at their own 18-yard line with 9.01 remaining to play in quarter number two. 
in Dickinson State. Look in front. I see Mattern up there for the Blue Hawks. Also in there for Dickinson State coming across the line of scrimmage. And they set up with the three-man front, bring the linebackers up. It's almost a five-man front. And Salmon again, long count by Tim. He'll move Neville to his right from behind him. And there's that little delay to Neville. He tries to break across the 25 and does to about the 26, maybe 27-yard line. Let's see where they put it down at. At the 26, or excuse me, at the 21. That'll be a pickup of three on the play for Neville. And it'll bring up a second down and seven from Mayville State. Well, the Comets looking at second and seven at their own 21-yard line. Into the ball game for the Blue Hawks. It looks like Braden Rack, the uh, defensive lineman, a freshman at 225. He'll play up front for Dickinson State. Shift around again. Now a true four-man look for the Blue Hawks up front in that D line. They're running a lot of people in and out of there in that front four, front five. Again, Neville to the right of Salmon on second down and seven. And there's the carry again by Neville. Makes a nice cut back. Not quite enough for first down, but across the 25 to the 26. And Neville will pick up five on the play, getting up off the bottom of the pile that time for Dickinson State University, a host of tacklers at number 93. A great rack looks like the guy will get credited with it. So a five-yard pickup for Neville. Third down and two for Mayville State at the 26, their own 26-yard line. 7.52 remaining to play. First quarter, Dickinson State 14 and Mayville State 3. Salmon again gives the fist pump to Neville, his running back behind him, and he'll go to work with Twins near side, solo receiver wide side, and now what do we got? Another timeout. The Comets will burn their third timeout, their final timeout of the first half. We'll go with them. 7.36 left to go in the first half. Dickinson State 14, Mayville State 3. We'll come back on Consolidated Live TV, KDIX Radio, KMAV Radio. We'll be back in 30 seconds. World-renowned YouTube chef Lamise O brings her authentic Caribbean cuisine to the Dickinson area. Island Cuisine is open in the St. Joe's Plaza with available takeout and dine-in options. You'll find their entire menu on Facebook or call 483-9918 to place a pickup order. Enjoy incredible dishes like brown stew chicken or everyone's favorite, Rasta Pasta. Call now to order or stop in. Island Cuisine, located in St. Joe's Plaza, Dickinson. to three, Mayville State, big offensive play upcoming for them, trailing 14 to three, with just over seven and a half remaining in the first half. They'll go to work third down and two at their own 26 yard line. They've used their third timeout. Rocky Larson quickly got that timeout. They've got the tent set up over there, so both tents on both sidelines. So gets a little jade, as he said, approaching in that low 90 degree range here on this uh, Saturday afternoon as we approach one o'clock Mountain Time. And again, Salmon has trips to the far side, empty to the near side, so all the receivers out in front of the Mayville State bench. Salmon, the lone running back, and uh, the quarterback, now he moves his running back that time, Neville, to his right again, and fakes it to him. He's going to go to him, and there's enough for a first down. Nice run. A good effort by Salmon to get the ball to him, and then he just spot his way across the 28 to the 29, so let's give Neville the workhorse on this dive. Three carries. He gains 11 yards, and Mayville State has a first down, their fifth first down of the football game. The Comets now have rushed for a total of 10 yards in this ball game, but a nice uh, drive there uh, by Neville got the first down. And a good lead block that time by the tight end, Kelby Alger, as he was able to get that block and give Neville the room to get to the outside and get the first down just shy of the 30. Hole 29 is where they spot it down. Salmon again barking out signals. 14-3 lead for the Blue Hawks. Seven minutes left to go before halftime. There's the handoff again. Salmon trying to get to the outside. Cuts back. Good pursuit by the Blue Hawks. He gets back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. But bodies all over there. Nathaniel Jilly kind of tripped him up. Also in there slowing it down was Riley Waters. So good pursuit by the Blue Hawks defense. Hold Neville to no gain on the play. So to bring up a second down and 10 for Mayville State. Second and 10 at their own 29-yard line. Again, the Hawks sent defensively. Hartwell will come out uh, defensively at a corner on this side. Also... Uh, coming out for Dickinson State. They'll put some more new people in that defensive line and go with a four-man front now. And Salmon again comes up to the line of scrimmage. That play clock now under 10 seconds. Uh, Comets out of timeout, so they're going to have to hurry to get this play off. Salmon again puts Neville to his right. He's in a hurry down to two, down to one. He just got the snap off. Here comes the pressure. It's across the middle, and it's going to be incomplete on the hands momentarily of the intended receiver. 
for Dick uh, for Mayville State that time, number 10, Roundtree, but good pursuit back there defensively by number 28 for Dickinson State, Cooper McLaughlin. And it looked like it was going to be an easy easy completion, but McLaughlin able to come up and put the hit down and get the hand in there and knock it loose and brings up a third down and 10 for the Comets. Comets in this first half now, a total of 10 rushing, 15 passing, 20 or five total yards. And trying to keep this drive going with six minutes left to go. Third and 10 at the 29. Dickinson State's defense, again, some penalties, but uh, have been pretty good events, both the run and pass thus far in the first half. There's a little movement. There's the pressure. Salmon scrambling. He's got Matter and chasing him. He's going to throw it up for grabs and throw it away. I would, too, if I had threw Matter and chasing me around. I'd get rid of it as quickly as possible. And he did a good job of evading him and then throwing it away. So it'll be punt time for Mayville State University. And a good push up front by Dickinson State to not allow Salmon to even get the opportunity to look downfield as he was split out and rolled to his left and just threw it away to get the uh, possession back to Dickinson State with the punt. Gunlack will be back deep to receive. Kale, the freshman wide receiver and returner out of Great Falls, Montana, standing at about his own 40-yard line. Nice punt last time by Johnson. He's had three, a short one, a medium one, and a long one. This is a pretty good punt, too. Let's see what kind of bounce it takes. It'll bounce out of bounds inside the 35, and they'll put it right at the 30-yard line. So that'll be a pretty darn good punt again, about a 40-yard punt, a little over 40, 41. And Dickinson State again with 547 and left to go in the first half. Will take over at their own 30-yard line, leading 14 to 3 on the CHI. St. Alexius Health scoreboard. The Hawks have thrown for 103 yards, rushed for 25 in this football game, 128 total yards, eight first downs. The Comets at this point in the ball game, 10 rushing, 15 passing, 25 total yards, and five first downs in the football game. And I think to give them a water break here, both teams heading over to the sideline. We'll just keep it right here. As we said, a busy day today. A little bit of football action last night. Valley City State was in action against South Dakota Mines, losing down in Rapid City, 31 to 14. There's some uh, college football action again today. I think uh, memory serves me right. Dakota State in action uh, today. Uh, no, they were in action earlier this week. Dakota State was, and uh, a few teams playing today. Waldorf, Iowa, involved in action. Of course, Dickinson State and Mayville in a conference game today. So the water break over for Mayville State. The Blue Hawks are finishing up their water break, and we're ready just about to get back into action here at Bijou Activity Center. What a great crowd on hand on this Labor Day weekend at the back as Dickinson State, again, ready to go to work. The Blue Hawks again leading 14 to 3 on the CHI St. Alexia Cell scoreboard. Brown back in now at a running back for Dickinson State. We've seen him and Zura back to pass. Mandler going out in the far sideline, trying to get it out there. Nice catch over there. Coming up with it, Colin Bowden had to reach out to the junior 6 5 receiver. Made a great catch by Bowden. So that'll be a pickup on the play out to the 37 yard line, and that'll be a pickup of seven on the play. They'll go quickly after that catch. Second down and three. Again, there's that little jet sweep again to Koontz. Koontz trying to find some room, and he got nowhere to go. Great defensive play that time by the Comets, and I think that's number 15 coming up to make the hit. Jordan Richardson and the D-back made an excellent play, and that'll be a loss of a yard for Koontz on the play. So good job, and it'll bring up third down for Dickinson State and three. The ball at the 37-yard line of Dickinson State. They go out in the flat. Sickler's got it. First down yardage. Oh, no, they say he didn't come up with the catch. Say he came off the ground, so it'll go incomplete. He dove out, but the pass incomplete, so the Hawks will punt the ball back to Mayville State. Madler now 9 of 14 on the afternoon, 103 yards. No touchdowns, one interception, or make that 110 yards. Again, in the passing department for Madler, 10 of 14 in the ball game. After that incompletion, and the Hawks again, three dry, three plays and out. So again, Mayville State's defense doing a nice job keeping the Hawks offense at bay. Again, in to do the punting for Dickinson State, Bridger Groven. Good snap, not a big rush. Groven will angle it towards the near sideline, and the fair catch going to be taken at the 26-yard line by Mayville State. So the Comets with 4.49 remaining to play 
in quarter number two. It's Dickinson State in the lead. 14 to three, Mayville State will take over at their own, let's see where they spot it, 27 yard line. And that's where the comments will go to work. Now remember, they're out of timeouts. Dickinson State does have two timeouts remaining. So the Blue Hawks again, get their defensive unit out there. Let's take a look at that secondary. There's McLaughlin back there. Hartwell is back there. Also in the ball game, DeMarco in that secondary for Dickinson State. And also Tal Lundy looks in there for the Blue Hawks. So the starters still working some time. We got Jillick at a linebacking spot for Dickinson State. And also coming up at a linebacking spot for the Blue Hawks. Chris Abillo in there for the Blue Hawks. And again, the Hawks will go to work defensively, but Comets offensively with 449 remaining in the first quarter. Dickinson State again leading 14-3. Salmon ready to go to work. Makes the handoff, keeps it. He's going to be hit and drop for a loss on the play back at the 25-yard line. Again, good pressure up front. That D-line right now beginning to exert itself for Dickinson State. And there's Crew Mattern again, but an excellent uh, pursuit by Mattern and Crew up front. And Salmon will lose two on the play. So a two-yard loss on the play. Mayville State again just eight yards rushing against this Dickinson State defense. Coming wide near side, Davidson. They'll go twins to the far side. Roundtree and Flowers on the far side. Again, Neville stays in the backfield at the running back position behind the quarterback. Salmon now moves even with him at the 20. Salmon back to pass. Again, some pressure. They're trying to set up that screen. They get a little bust there and breaking a tackle at the 35 to the 40. Here comes a flag. That'll be an illegal block right at the 45-yard line. But set that one up and finally got a little bit of time. We got flags all over, three of them down. A nice catch that time out of the backfield. They set it up to Neville, and he scooted from the 25 out to about the 45, a pickup of about 20, but those flags came out before Neville even got out of bounds, so it'll come back at the flag at the 32-yard line. It was right in front of us, and uh, one of the receivers blocking came up from behind to block one of the defensive backs from Dickinson State, and you don't want to do that in front of a referee, and there were two of them there, and both those flags came out immediately, and again, more laundry on the field, Jim. And a break for Dickinson State as that was a nice setup and an executed screenplay. Neville got all the way across the 45 out to the 46 yard line. Would have been a first down, but take the first down away, put the penalty back inside the 25 down at the 22, and it'll be a second down and 13 for the Comets. So the Comets go to work at the 22 yard line, have to get out to about the 37, their own 37. So Salmon now a little bit of work again with 3.45 and the clock moving to go here in the first half. Again, long count by Salmon. There's the handoff. They get it to Neville outside, tries to turn the corner. He'll be run down and run out of bounds that time. See, is that DeMarco down there coming up to make the hit for Dickinson State? Nope, that's, I believe, number 37, Lundy, coming up to make the hit. So nice play by Tell. A pickup as they go out of bounds. And again, remember, the uh, play stopped at the 25-yard line, so a pickup of three on the play. So it'll bring up third down and 12 now for May Mayville State. Timeout, Dickinson State, 333 left to go. In the first half on the CHI St. Alexis South scoreboard, we've been stuck on 14-3 for quite some time. The Blue Hawks in the lead. Let's take a quick 30-second break on Katie Hikes, Dickinson, KMAB, and consolidated back in a half minute. Favorite thing about my street? My co-op. It isn't just about electricity. It's about power. The power of information. About safety. Efficiency. Technology. I am the co-op. I am the co-op. And the co-op is me. Western Cooperative Credit Union is dedicated to offering you the best financial services around. We're local, we're personal, and we're great at what we do for you. Join the herd. Western Cooperative Credit Union. 85 years the Western way. Western Cooperative Credit Union is your local loan headquarters. Thinking about a new car or truck, ATV, boat, or RV? We'll make the process quick and easy. Call us today. Western Cooperative Credit Union. 85 years the Western way. This time, Neville steps up even with him. So, again, trip formation right side, solo left side for the Comets. They need 12 yards. Salmon again takes a look. Here comes that pressure. All kinds of it. They run that screen again inside. And this time, not much doing to pick up to the line of scrimmage. And that's it as they got it out on the flat that time to the wideout who came back inside and couldn't get free that time. Davidson, and it'll go for no gain on the reception. And it'll bring up a punting situation for Mayville State. 
Neville, the running back, came out into the flat, and then Davison came back that behind him, and Neville was uh, kind of the blocking back in front of him, but Dickinson stayed able to get pursued over there and drop the uh, receiver for a no gain and bring up a fourth down, and Dickinson State will get the football back with just under three and a half left to play. Well, just keep it right here as the Blue Hawks burn their final timeout. But again, just looking at the numbers, not much rushing game by either team in this first half. Uh, Madler's had some success throwing the football, did have the pick early in the ball game, but since then it's been pretty sharp, 10 of 15 for 110 yards. Uh, Salmon hasn't thrown for a lot, but 6 of 13, 15 yards. But the Blue Hawks have rushed for only 24, uh, led by Zeroff, who has 5 for 30, and Brown has rushed for a total of 13 yards, but they've had several losses, a sack or two against Mandler. So now the Blue Hawks again put Gunlack back deep to receive the punt. So Gunlack will go back at about his own 40-yard line. There's the snap. Caden Johnson, the punter. Nice punt by Johnson. That's going to carry all the way back, and Gunlack's just going to watch that one bounce. It'll be downed at the 31-yard line, so an excellent punt that time. That's about a 48, 49-yard punt by Caden Johnson. And they'll spot it right at the 31. So Dickinson State, no timeout left. They'll have it at their own 31 with 318 remaining to play here in the second quarter. And Will Madler will lead the offensive unit out there. So the Blue Hawks lead 14 to 3. And that offensive unit comes out for Dickinson State in that line again. Uh, Rollins, uh, Showalter, Kalexko, Lunick at center, Woodruff, Benick, the all conference players at the uh, guards and tackle positions. Uh, and they'll be protecting the cornerback, Will Madler, here as Zuroff in at the running back position. Twin receivers, Sickler and Koontz come wide near side. Shepard, the presentation transfer, wide to the left side. Zuroff gets the call, bounces inside, bounces outside, turns the corner, and he picked up maybe a yard on the play for Braden Zuroff. So Zuroff will pick up one on the play on his uh, sixth carry of the football game for 31 yards. It'll bring up a second down and nine for the Blue Hawks at the 32, their own 32. And a good push that time by the front for Mayville State. Didn't give Zuroff any room. In fact, pushed the uh, tackle into Zuroff, and he had to bounce off that to get to the outside. So Sickler comes out wide to the near side for Dickinson State. Mather sets his team. Zuroff to his left will stay in the block all kinds of time. They're looking downfield for Sickler. Sickler goes up. Did he hang on to it? No, he tried to make a one-hand grab at the 33 of Mayville State. Nearly pulled it off, but at the last second, good pursuit defensively that time downfield by Caden Johnson, who just did the punting and kind of got a hand on it and just stripped it away. Great job by Mayville State in the defensive coverage. Sickler got both hands on it, but then Johnson stuck his hand in between Sicklers and was able to pop it loose and bring up a third down and nine for Dickinson State as the Blue Hawks try and avoid their second straight three and out. So Madler will set that offensive unit. Zuroff again beside him. He'll stay in and block again. Then he'll fire out of there. They go to Koontz wide open at midfield. He'll haul it down. They got Koontz on a linebacker. And the speedy Caden Koontz hauls it in at the 47 of Mayville. Takes it down to the 44 of Mayville. And that is a pickup of 24 on the catch by Koontz. Koontz just ran right up the seam and able to get the first down into Mayville State territory. Back to pass is Madler. He steps away from it and somehow got it off and Gunlack will haul it in for a 10-yard pickup. Good job by Madler to stay alive on that play. 12 of 18, now 144 passing and another first down, 10th first down for the Blue Hawks. And that time Madler able to show his strength as he held on. They give Dickinson State the first down. Their 10th first down. Again, there's a handoff this time. Zuroff straight ahead goes to the 30-yard line. And that'll be a pickup on the play from the 34. They finally put it down right at 30. A four-yard pickoff uh, for Zuroff. His seventh carry now for 35 yards in this football game. Second down and six at the 30 of Mayville. A minute 40 remaining to play. First half, 14-3. Dickinson State in the lead. Madler all kinds of time. Fires a bullet across the middle. That time trying to get it off to Koontz again at about the 20-yard line. Goes incomplete, so it'll bring up a third down and six. Madler 12 of 19, 144 yards. No touchdowns, one interception. So third and six at the 30 of Mayville for Dickinson State. Probably two down territory here for the Blue Hawks. And good coverage that time by Marcellus Moore, the freshman cornerback, as he was right on the hip of Kuntz. And, and Madler unable to get it in there, and it'll bring up a third down and six. So it'll bring up third down and about uh, six. Got to get to the 24 at the 30. 
Battling not only the change, but also the first down. Mather's got a man open in the end zone, but he threw it up for grabs. Good read by the defensive back. He was trying to hit Brantley, who got open, but coming over and getting a hand on that one and slapping it to the ground. Not quite sure who that was back there. I'm trying to get a number. He turned away from me at the last second, but a good defensive play saves a touchdown as Brantley was open momentarily, but it closed in a hurry. So Hawks will most likely go for it. Fourth and six at the 30, a little bit too far for a field goal. Would be a field goal of nearly 47, 48 yards. So Madler had some running room that time. I thought he might take it and run. He ran last week quite a bit at Billings, rushed for 36 yards on five or six carries. Madler steps up again, got a man wide open. That's Shepard. He breaks the tackle at the 20, fights his way inside the 15. And the presentation college uh, transfer picks up yardage from the 30 down to the 13-yard line of 17-yard pickup. That'll stop the clock momentarily while they reset the chains, and there'll be a first and 10 inside the 15. Well, they put it right at the 13-yard line, and then on the carry straight ahead, that is Zurop. He just powers his way inside the five. He's going to be close to first down yardage. I think he's going to be about a yard shy. So Zurop, a very strong run. He goes for nine yards. So Zurop on the carry for Dickinson State, his eighth carry now for 44 yards. It'll be second and one. They go straight ahead again. Was that Zuroff again? Yep, he goes straight ahead. Well, Zuroff will pick up three on the play and bring up a, well, let's call it a first down, I do believe. Isn't nope, it? they stopped him right at the line. Oh, they say right at the line. Okay, I thought he got a little forward progress. So third down and one at the four-yard line, 34 seconds remaining. Dickinson stayed out of timeouts. Mayville stayed out of timeouts. And again, ready to go to work is Mandler, he looks, he rolls, he's got some pressure, he throws it in the end zone for Koontz, but overthrown considerably, so stops the clock with 21 seconds. Good read that time, good coverage by the defensive secondary. 13 of 22, 161 now for Mandler, and the Hawks will get a fourth and one, and they're going to bring the field goal unit in. They're going to try and get some points out of this. Remember, they received the football to begin the second half, so they want to get a score going out, maybe a score uh, coming into the second half, going out of the first half, so in the attempt the field goal, basically just an elongated extra point, a 21-yard field goal attempt uh, coming up here for Dickinson State. And the kick, what do we got, is up, and it is good. So the kick is good with 17 seconds remaining to play, and Dickinson State, a long drive that time. Let's count them up here. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 11, 12 plays for Dickinson State, and they march down the field in about three minutes and get a field goal of 21 yards that time by Chase Miller and the Blue Hawks on the CHI. St. Alexia South scoreboard lead Mayville State by a margin of 17 to 3. Back with the Hawks kickoff to the Comets in 30 seconds. The Hub in North Dickinson is more than your ordinary convenience store. From Godfather's Pizza and the Hub Cafe to gourmet coffee, tea, and more. Stop by early for breakfast or grab something to go. We carry a variety of donuts that we make fresh every day. If your vehicle is dirty, we now have a state-of-the-art car wash at both locations. Stop in and see what we have to offer at the Hub located on North Highway 22 or the Hub West Dakota Oil on East Villard in Dickinson. We're changing the way people think about the convenience store industry. State again goes 12 plays, 65 yards in three minutes. It ends with a Chase Miller 21-yard field goal, and the Blue Hawks again lead it 17-3 on the CHI. St. Alexia South scoreboard. Miller will kick it off. This one a little shorter kick. It's going to be fielded at the 20-yard line on that time by Neville, and he'll get it back across the 25 out to about the 30 with 12 seconds remaining, and the clock rolling down to 10, down to 9 seconds and now we'll get uh, maybe a play out of Mayville. Let's see what they do. Again, remember the Blue Hawks were uh, deferred in the first half, so they wanted to get some points out of that drive. Jim got that and they'll have the football to begin the second half also. Well, and when you get it in the red zone and they don't have a lot of time and you run the football a couple of times, that takes quite a bit of time off the clock and it, Blue Hawks had already used all their timeouts, so threw it on that third down and goal and I'm sure Coach Stanton wanted to get the touchdown, but knew if he could get the clock stopped, still had time to get the field goal before the end of the quarter. So Dickinson State sets defensively in the comments. Again, I think just take the knee here, and that's what they'll do, and that'll bring it in to our first half of play. Oops, let's see what we got. A penalty flag. Oh, why not? We've had them all first half long. Let's have another one. <laughs> The flag came down. 
legal procedure against Mayville. We don't keep the penalties here, but we get the official stats at halftime. Be interested to see how many penalties both teams have had and how many yards. I don't think the Comets had enough guys on the line of scrimmage. Okay, that's what it was. All right, so we'll do it again. And again, they'll probably just take the knee and go down. And no time on the clock, so it's a... That's the end of the first half. Okay. Thank you, Reed Flogden. The referee says that's the end of the first half. So at halftime, on the CHI, St. Alexia's Health Scoreboard, Dickinson State University 17, the Mayville State Comets 3. We will take a timeout here on KDIX KMAB. And also, our good friends at Consolidated will get a break. We've got a two-and-a-half-minute break up and coming on KDIX. We'll come back with our scoring summary, and, of course, we'll have our halftime report and all that more coming up here on KDIX KMAB and Consolidated. We'll start it in two-and-a-half minutes. Clogged or slow-moving drains are no match for Josh and his licensed techs at Unplugged Drain Cleaning of Dickinson. They provide 24-hour service to solve all your sewer problems. Using only the best equipment along with the latest drain camera technology to resolve issues while maintaining the integrity of your pipes. They take pride in thoroughly explaining your options, providing free estimates and great service, and making sure your issues are resolved permanently. Contact Unplugged Drain Cleaning at 701-290-9737 or online at UnpluggedDrains.com. West Dakota Oil and Fitterer Oil Company proudly offers products and services that help fuel our customers' lives with clean burning propane and bulk fuel and convenient on-site delivery with premium farm and road fuels. We provide energy where and when you need it most with locations throughout Southwest North Dakota. West Dakota Oil and Fitterer Oil Company, locally owned, locally strong, the products you need with the service you deserve. Bravera's more than a bank. We're a group of people in the business of helping communities forge on. At the counter, we offer convenience so the day can forge on. In the thick of the hall, we protect your peace of mind so the season can forge on. And around the table, we make room for everyone so life can forge on. We're more than a bank. We're your path ahead. Bravera, forge your path. Consolidated handles um, not only our phone service, our internet, our, um, our Wi-Fi, but they also handle our, as of lately, they took on our IT support and our cybersecurity. So it was exactly what we needed. Um, it's been great. We haven't had any issues, but um, that, that is a good peace of mind when I leave and go home and knowing that my business, my customer information, everything is secure and I don't have to worry about that. Banking is some of the most important things in your life, and banking at the right bank is very important. We're really proud of our bank because we have great people, and our people are what make our bank go. We always want to treat our customers right and do the best job we can for them, and try to do things to help make our communities better. We're back at the studio engineering and today with occasional help from Mike Renner, but we're ready for our halftime report here on KDIX. And again, KMAV and Consolidated with uh, about 17 minutes before the start of the second half. Let's take a look at our scoring summary for you. First of all, Mayville State got on the board first after an interception by Anthony Johnson. The Comets put together a short drive, six plays, 30 yards. And at the 9.07 mark of the first quarter, the field goal attempt. Uh, by Lacombe was up and good from 25 yards out, and the Comets led three to nothing. And the Blue Hawks got the ball back at their own 33, proceeded to go eight plays, 67 yards. Brayton Zuroff, a couple of nice runs to finish off the drive, a 12-yard run for a first down, an eight-yard run for a touchdown. Miller hit the PAT, and 6-10 left to go. First quarter, Dickinson State led 7-3. to three. Then the Blue Hawks got a stop again, got it back, put together a nine-play, 45-yard drive. Caden Coots on a jet sweep. The Dickinson Trinity product took it in on the uh, play from uh, two yards out. PAT Miller good. And the Hawks led 14 to 3 just into the second quarter, the first play of the second quarter. And that made it 
14 to 3 with 14.57 left to go. And then our only other score came right at the end of the second quarter, a 12 play 65 yard drive. The Hawks got it with 3.18 left to go, tried to push it in the end zone, but the Comets defense stood up inside the five and forced Dickinson State to attempt a field goal, the 21 yard field goal attempt by Chase Miller was good. That's coming with just over uh, 17 seconds remaining to play, and that score for Dickinson State came with a total of 17 seconds left to go in the first half, made it 17 to 3, and that is where we stand at halftime. Dickinson State University leading 17 to 3. Got another timeout here on KDX KMAV. And also consolidated, we'll take a two-minute break, and then Jim and I will come back, take a look at the numbers for the Comets and for the Blue Hawks, team-wise and individually-wise, and we will do that for you in two minutes. Hi, Dan Porter here. When you're having trouble getting your car or truck in for service, think Dan Porter Motors. Fast express service. Low price tires with rotations for life. Free alignment checks. Free car washes with service. Low price daily rental cars. Shuttle service to and from work. Give us a call at 227-1272 or see us on the web at dpmotors.com. That's 227-1272 for all your service needs. Give us a call. Challenges and struggles are part of everyday life for all of us. At Infinity Real Estate Group, we don't back down and we take it all in stride. One, two, three, four, five, six, you go girl! In these struggles, there are no mistakes, only life lessons. We may not be that good at some things, but we do excel in real estate. We are Infinity Real Estate Group. Experience the Infinity way. Uh, Dickinson State University leading 17 to 3 on the CHI St. Alexia South scoreboard. The Hawks have rushed for 49 yards. Will Mandler's been pretty efficient and effective in the passing game. Uh, 13 for 22, so 17 rushes for 49 in the rushing department. 13 of 22, no touchdowns, one interception in the uh, passing game for Mandler for 163 yards. For Dickinson State, 39 plays already, 212 yards in total offense for the Blue Hawks. Uh, they have 13, or let's double check that in the first down. Yep, 13 first downs for Dickinson State. And they have the one turnover, a pass interception thrown by Madler, picked off by Johnson. For Mayville State in the first half, they had a total of just 12 yards rushing, 15 carries for 12 yards in the passing department, 7 of 14 for Salmon for a total in the uh, passing department for Mayville State of 36 yards for the Comets. Uh, 29 plays, just 48 total yards against this Dickinson State defense. And again, first downs for Mayville State, four. They did not have a turnover in the first half of the football game. And again, uh, for the penalty situation, we wondered, and then uh, we look at it here, Mayville State, five for 63. Dickinson State, six for 59. So. We had a lot of yellow. That's 11 penalties between the two teams for about 120 yards in penalties in the first half of this football game. That is a lot. The Blue Hawks over 3 of 8 on first downs. Mayville State 3 of 10. Let's take a look at the individual numbers for the Blue Hawks. Madler 13 of 22, 163, no touchdowns, one interception. Braden Zeroff, nine carries for 40 yards in the first half. Caden Coons, three for 13. Darian Brown has three for 12. Uh, for receiving for Dickinson State, 
Uh, the Blue Hawks, Noah Sickler, four catches for 54 yards, and uh, two catches for Caden Coons for 23. Schumacher, three for 33. Gunlock was one for 10. Zeroff, one for 19. Bowden, one for seven. And Shepard, one for 17 for Dickinson State University. For receiving from Mayville State, Lamont has a total of five catches for 13. Nebel has one for 20. And uh, Azure, one for three. And I believe on that for Mayville State, they have Lamont, but I believe it is Davidson who is the guy catching the ball, number 14, I think, Jim, I believe for that, because I know Pete said in the pregame show he was back. So uh, that is, I think, a mistake in the stats. We'll double check it, but again, five for 13 in the receiving department for, uh, we're going to give it uh, the credit uh, to uh, Mayville State's Davidson uh, for those receptions in the ball game. Again, one interception, Anthony Johnson had that for Mayville State in the football game. Jim has a look at some defensive numbers. Well, defensively uh, leading the way for Mayville State, they had a bunch of guys with two tackles. Caden Johnson, Jordan Richardson, Ezekiel Knott, Will Flemons, Marcellus Moore all had two total tackles in the first half. Brady La De La Rock had three, and Gunnar Jorgensen had three, and they had two sacks in the first half. Uh, De La Rock had one of them, Jorgensen had the other for Mayville State. For Dickinson State, leading the way off, uh, defensively, uh, Crew Mather, he has uh, three total tackles. Uh, he and Zane McCormick combined for the lone sack in the first half for Dickinson State. But first half, uh, like you said, a lot of penalties for both teams. I, I guess that can be expected when it's uh, just your second game of the day and it's a little bit hot out there down on the turf. But uh, other than that, uh, Dickinson State played a pretty good first half uh, on the defensive side. The lone score coming on a short field after the interception. And uh, Mayville State got the field goal to start the football game. But uh, Dickinson State offensively uh, really throwing the football well as Madler has been able to move in and out of the pocket to uh, buy some time and give him an opportunity to get it downfield to a talented receiving core. I think if you're Dickinson State, you'd like to see a little bit better job in the running game in the second half than you saw in the first half as uh, the Blue Hawks uh, didn't run the football a whole lot in the first half. I suspect you maybe see them try and run the football a little bit more in the second half for Mayville State. Offensively, just really been unable to get anything going as uh, they have had several punts in the first half and had just that one scoring drive that when they had the short field after the interception and got just the field goal that Dickinson State uh, going to try and double up, get the score at the end of the first half, get the football to start the second half and really can open things up if they can come out and, and get a score to start the second half and, and push that lead up from 17 to 3 to 20 to 3 or 24 to 3 with that first drive of the third quarter. All right, well, pretty entertaining first half, as we said. Penalties kind of dominating it for both teams. At times, had some bright spots. Mayville State more so on the defensive side than offensive side. The Blue Hawks had some nice offensive plays. And Owen Sickler comes to mind. They're off again solid in the running game. And we'll see what happens in the second half. We're going to send it back now to our respective studios here in uh, Dickinson and in Mayville. KMAV in Mayville. Craig Keating, I know, engineering back in Mayville. We're going to take a little break here at halftime, and then we will come back with second half action here at the Bijou Activity Center on a hot and sunny and kind of breezy afternoon here before a very big crowd at the Bijou Activity Center. We'll send it back to our respective studios. We'll take a six-minute break, six minutes, and then we'll be back with second half action on KDIX. KMAB and Consolidated again at halftime. It is Dickinson State 17, the Mayville State Comets 3, back in six minutes. World-renowned YouTube chef Lamise O oh brings her authentic Caribbean cuisine to the Dickinson area. Island Cuisine is open in the St. Joe's Plaza with available takeout and dine-in options. You'll find their entire menu on Facebook or call 483-9918 to place a pickup order. Enjoy incredible dishes like brown stew chicken or everyone's favorite, Rasta Pasta. Call now to order or stop in Island Cuisine located in St. Joe's Plaza, Dickinson. Favorite thing about my street? My co-op. It isn't just about electricity. It's about power. The power of information. About safety. Efficiency. Technology. I am the co-op. I am the co-op. And the co-op is me.
Western Cooperative Credit Union is dedicated to offering you the best financial services around. We're local, we're personal, and we're great at what we do for you. Join the herd. Western Cooperative Credit Union. 85 years the Western way. Western Cooperative Credit Union is your local loan headquarters. Thinking about a new car or truck, ATV, boat, or RV? We'll make the process quick and easy. Call us today. Western Cooperative Credit Union. 85 years the Western way. The Hub in North Dickinson is more than your ordinary convenience store. From Godfather's Pizza and the Hub Cafe to gourmet coffee, tea, and more. Stop by early for breakfast or grab something to go. We carry a variety of donuts that we make fresh every day. If your vehicle is dirty, we now have a state-of-the-art car wash at both locations. Stop in and see what we have to offer at The Hub located on North Highway 22 or The Hub West Dakota Oil on East Villard in Dickinson. We're changing the way people think about the convenience store industry. Clogged or slow-moving drains are no match for Josh and his licensed techs at Unplugged Drain Cleaning of Dickinson. They provide 24-hour service to solve all your sewer problems. Using only the best equipment along with the latest drain camera technology to resolve issues while maintaining the integrity of your pipes. They take pride in thoroughly explaining your options, providing free estimates and great service, and making sure your issues are resolved permanently. Contact Unplugged Drain Cleaning at 701-290-9737 or online at UnpluggedDrains.com. West Dakota Oil and Fitterer Oil Company proudly offers products and services that help fuel our customers' lives with clean burning propane and bulk fuel and convenient on-site delivery with premium farm and road fuels. We provide energy where and when you need it most with locations throughout Southwest North Dakota. West Dakota Oil and Fitterer Oil Company, locally owned, locally strong, the products you need with the service you deserve. Here come the Blue Hogs. <laughs> Dickinson State Athletics would like to thank Sanford Orthopedic Sports Medicine for being the Blue Hawk official sports medicine team. The Blue Hawks would like to thank this year's Blue Game Day sponsors, Coca-Cola, Midco, Choice Bank, Western Cooperative Credit Union, Chabrillo Car Center, and Players Sports Bar. Kansas State University would also like to thank the dedicated efforts of the Blue Hawks Booster Club for all they do to support and advance of DSU athletics.
Again, thank Patricia and Stir. Taking care of business back at the studio for Kate Gox, Craig Keating and Mayville. Both guys I know doing a superb job and we appreciate that. Old guys like me need a lot of help, so it's nice to get it from the guys that are taking care of everything back at the studio. We appreciate that. The Comet will kick off to begin the second half of this football game. 17 to three, our score at halftime, Dickinson State in the lead. Back deep to receive will be Darian Brown and Hartwell for Dickinson State. Brown, a sophomore, and Hartwell is a junior for the Blue Hawks. Both very talented. Hartwell on the defensive side as a secondary person, and Brown, a running back. He and, of course, Zuroff, the main two running backs for Dickinson State. And the ball will be a poached and a nice kickoff this time. It's going to carry down to Hartwell. He'll field it at the 10. He's back to the 15, the 20, the 25, the 30, the 32, 33. And finally brought down at about the 35-yard line, I do believe. Kind of slaps the football. I think you saw a little room to go, but just couldn't quite get there as the coverage closed in on him. So Dickinson State will go to work at their own 35, leading 17-3 to on the CHI St. Alexia South scoreboard. Sickler and Gunlack will go out wide to the far side. Kuntz and Bowden will come out yeah, wide to the near side for Dickinson bad. State. Rivera's more than a bank. To go to work is Mabler. He had a solid first half. He had a great game last week and has been solid again today. Had the early pick, but other than that, there's Zuroff. Big hole up the middle for Zuroff. He'll fight his way from the 33 out to near the 40-yard line. So... Zuroff's 10th carry of the ball game will go for seven yards, and that'll bring up a second down and three. Zuroff today, that's his 10th carry. He's rushed for 47 yards, and the Blue Hawks as a team have rushed for a total of 56 yards. Jim alluded to, I think that they would like to see improvement, and that we will see if that happens here in the second half. So Zuroff again with the first carry of the second half, second down and three at their own 40. Again, Madler, long count. Fakes the handoff, looks, he's going to tuck it, he's going to spin away. He's got first down yardage and more. He's across the 45, keeps his feet, he's out to midfield. Good read, good run by Mather. Other than the sack, that is his first carry of the football game. And he goes from the 43-yard line, or 42-yard line, off to the 50, an eight-yard rush for Mather and a first down for Dickinson State. That will be their 14th first down of the football game. So first and 10 for the Hawks. Right at midfield, right at the 50-yard line. Mabner again has Duroff to his left. Twin receivers stacked left and right. A four-wide-out set for Dickinson State. They swing it out on the flat to Kuntz. A little wide receiver screen. Kind of, I call it a naked screen because that wide receiver is on his own. Catch it and go. And Kuntz did that. He stepped out of bounds. He went forward to about the 45 but stepped out at the 47. So it's a three-yard gain for Kuntz on the reception. And it'll bring up second down and seven for Dickinson State at the 40, let's call it 47-yard line of Mayville. Again, Madler takes his time a little bit more with that completion. Madler now 14 of 23 in the passing department for Dickinson State, 166 yards, back to pass again. That ball batted down, good pressure up front again. Comets have done that a couple times and got good inside pursuit that time defensively and batted the ball down, so it'll bring up a third down and seven for Dickinson State. And a good push up front by the Comets yeah, defensive line. And like a defensive line coaches always like to say, if you can't get to the quarterback, make sure and get your hands up. And that was the case that time for the Comets as they were able to knock it down at the line of scrimmage. Well, the Comets a big play defensively here. They held Dickinson State to a field goal then the first half, trying to get them to turn it over on downs here to begin the second half, third and seven. Back to pass Mandler again all kinds of time. Across the middle, wide open, Caden Coots. Boy, Mandler showed such good patience, and Coots finally came free at the 35. Credit the O-line for giving him time. And that's a pickup of 12 yards on the play. As Mandler very patient on that pass completion. And it was a clean pocket that time, so Mandler was able to step up, and Coots broke free at the 35, and an easy pitch and catch, and a first down for Dickinson State. And then Coots, or then uh, Caden fell forward to the 34, so Dickinson State keeps the drive going. At the Mayville State 34-yard line. Again, Madler ready. Again, Zuroff on the carry. Straight ahead. Breaks a tackle at the 30. 25, 20. Cuts back at the 15. He's at the 10. He's at the 5. He's in the end zone. What a great run by Braden Zuroff breaking tackle 
after tackle, and he scores from 30 foul yards out. Man, oh man, he nearly went down, got his balance, broke a tackle at the 20, cut back through two tackles at the 10, drugged some with it at the 5, and stood up into the end zone. What a run, Jim, by Braden Durham. And Braden's a strong young man at 210, and he's got good leg strength that time as he was able to break a couple of arm tackles at the line of scrimmage, made a couple of nice moves inside the 15 and drug a couple of defenders for a couple of yards before breaking free at the five and going in for the touchdown. So a good strong run for the senior out of New Salem as he'll get on the board for the second time this afternoon. Great effort that time by the running back senior Zuroff and he does a good job on it and again Dickinson State in the lead, 24-3 on the CHI. St. Alexia South Court board back in 30 seconds with the Hawks kickoff to the Comets on KDIX, KMAV, and Consolidated. Rivera's more than a bank. We're a group of people in the business of helping communities forge on. At the counter, we offer convenience so the day can forge on. In the thick of the hall, we protect your peace of mind so the season can forge on. And around the table, we make room for everyone so life can forge on. We're more than a bank. We're your path ahead. Bravera, forge your path. As we come back again for Dickinson State, a nice drive to begin the second half for the Blue Hot six plays. And they go 75 or make it 65 yards in six plays for Dickinson St. Zuroff with a sparkling run of 34 yards for the touchdown. Kick's going to carry down to the three, nearly slipping and falling was the return man, but he'll bring it back across the 20, about the 23-yard line. So the return that time by Mayville State uh, bringing it back is Carlson. And the Comets now down 24 to 3. Uh, with uh, 12 minutes and 26 seconds remaining to play in the third quarter. Need to create some offense now. The comments again were limited in uh, the first half to just 48 yards on 29 plays by the Dickinson State defense. Well, the Blue Hawks did exactly what they wanted to to start the second half. Uh, established the run, got that good strong run for the touchdown by Zuroff and put some points on the board to double up to close out the first half and start the second half. So uh, if you're a Blue Hawk fan, it's exactly what you wanted to see, a score and uh, run the football. Zuroff now 11 carries, 81 yards. That pass across the middle, wide open on his knees at the 32, hauling it in for Mayville State. Again, the guy that just returned the kickoff, Carlson, and that'll be a pickup on the play of nine on the reception. Seven or make it eight of 15 now for a total of 45 yards for a Stanley. Has not thrown an interception, has not thrown a touchdown. Second and one for Mayville State at the 33-yard line, their own 33-yard line. Again, ready to go to work is the quarterback, and that is Salmon. He'll put the running back, Neville, right beside him. And again, long count. This time, Neville gets the call. He's going to be hit, and he's going to get back maybe. No, he's going to lose about a yard. Excellent pursuit up front by Dickinson State. Oh, big number 96 in there that time for the Blue Hawks. That's Austin Dennis. And that will be a loss of a, we'll call it no gain, a loss of about a half yard, but we'll call it no gain on the play. So it'll bring up a third down and about one and a half to go for Mayville State at their own 33-yard line. Again, Salmon ready. He'll mark out signals, clap those hands, and he's ready to go to work. Now he looks to the sideline, play clock. Uh, down to about 10 seconds. Dickinson State, Coach T down there adjusting his defense as Salmon adjusts his offense. And again, the snap, again, the give straight ahead. Did he get it? Boy, what an effort he got first down yardage. That was just all individual effort that time by the ball carrier on for Mayville State that time. And that is Ullman, number eight. And he did it all on his own. Next to effort by Ullman for a first down for the Comets to pick up on the play to the 35, and that's two yards and enough for a first down. Ullman got hit right at the line of scrimmage, but was able to bounce off, spin away, and get a couple of yards and get the first down out at the 35. So Mayville State keeps the drive alive and trails 24-3 on the CHI St. Alexios Health scoreboard. Again, ready to go to work. Salmon again puts that running back behind him instead of beside him. A little bit of a delay there on the snap. Ullman... Uh, staying in the block, and there's a pass out in the flat off the fingertips that time of number 14, and that is David Davidson. So Davidson comes up with what would look to be a good catch, just couldn't hang on to it. And 8 of 16 for 45 passing now 
uh, for Salmon. It'll bring up second and 10. The Blue Hawks had good pressure right up the middle, and Salmon able to roll away from it and put it right on the hands of Davison, but he was unable to corral it, so it'll bring up a second down and 10 for the Comets. Again, Davidson will come out wide to the near side, so Davidson comes out wide. In the backfield, Ullman remains the running back behind quarterback Salmon. Twin receivers to the Mayville side of the playing field. They're moving to the south end, moving north to south. Left to right, and Ullman gets a handoff. He slips, he falls, and he'll maybe get back to the line of scrimmage as the Hawks close in in a hurry that time for Dickinson State. Holds the Blue Hawks in on the tackle. We'll call that a gain of a yard for Ullman on the play, and it'll bring up a... Let's call it third down and nine for Mayville State at their own 36-yard line. And as soon as he got the football, Omen lost his footing, but able to keep his knee off the ground and get upfield and get a yard and bring up a third down and nine. Again, Salmon looks to the sideline, comes up underneath center, comes behind his line, barks out signals. He'll step back about three, four yards. Back to about the 31. The line of scrimmage is the 36. They have to get to the 45 of Mayville State. Nine yards for a first down. Ullman back. He's got time. Across the middle. Wide open. Here's the wide receiver, Davidson. He'll break a tackle at the 45. He's at the 50. Down the sideline and finally run out of bounds. He is a dangerous receiver, and he proved it on that play. Great catch and run by Davidson. He goes from the 36 of Mayville to the 40 of Dickinson State. And that's a 24-yard catch and run by Davidson. Just a short in pattern, and he went all the way across the line and able to get the catch around midfield, got to the outside, broke an arm tackle. Uh, would have been short of first down yardage, but broke free, got to the sideline, and got across midfield in a first down in Blue Hawk territory. And the Comets moving the football a little bit here on their first possession of the second half. Again across the middle, again they go downfield, pass incomplete that time attended for Carlson. Couldn't quite come up with it back on the coverage that time. Jackson Willems, a linebacker for Dickinson State, it goes incomplete. And that'll bring up a second down and 10 for Mayville State. Ball a little bit too far in front of Carlson. Made a diving attempt, but unable to corral it and brings up a second down. Nine of 18 now for Salmon. 70 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions. 24 to 3, Dickinson State in the lead. Nine minutes remaining to play in the third quarter. Here at a very hot BGU Activity Center. Big home crowd for the first game. Remember, this is the only time in September the Blue Hawks are home. They're at Wisconsin Stout next week off and then on the road the last two Saturdays. So they don't play again to about the 5th or 6th of October. Ullman on the carry. Bites his way from the 40 to about the 36th. Give Mason Ullman a pickup of four on the play. And it will bring up a third down and six for Mayville State. So third and six at the DSU. 36 for the Comets. Ninth play of this drive. Comets' best drive of the football game. Trying to get some points. Down now 24 to 3. They need some points. Probably would love a touchdown instead of a field goal attempt. So we'll see what the Comets do if it comes to that scenario here in this third quarter. But 8-24 remaining to play. Dickinson State leading by a score of 24 to 3. Comets battling hard here on the offensive side. Their best drive of the football game in progress right now. Tucked by Salmon. He's got all kinds of room, and he gets the first down yardage. Again, went back. The Hawks secondary doing their job, but as they dropped back, that opened up the seam in front of the Mayville State bench, and Salmon took advantage of it. Good read by Tim, and he'll pick up a first down play as it will go uh, from the 38 to the 30-yard line, an 8-yard run for Tim Salmon. And the pressure came right up the middle, so it opened the sidelines, and Salmon took it to the left side and got just enough for the first down. Double-digit play drive now, the 10th play of the drive for the Comets. Again, Ullman stays, I believe, in the backfield. We'll double-check that momentarily. Nope, looks like back into the ball game is Neville. Back to pass Salmon again. Some pressure. He's got a man out in the flat again and some room on the inside, breaking a tackle at the 25 and scooting down to his first down marker at the 20-yard line. It will depend upon the spot. But again, got that guy out of the backfield that time, and it's going to go. No penalty flags now. Just short, nine-yard pickup on the play. And Neville, the running back, just went up to the line of scrimmage. Didn't have anyone to block, so just released. Sam and flipped it to him, and he got to the outside, got to the sideline, and got a nine-yard gain. So second and one for Mayville, Mayville State at the 21-yard line of Dickinson State. Again, Neville stays in the backfield. Both Neville and uh, Ullman have been solid in that running back position. Now we got flags down. Play clock, well, what do we got? We had a uh, lot of plenty of time on the play clock. <laughs> yeah, there is. Legal procedure, Mayville State. My goodness, we had so many. I highlighted that at halftime. We had so many penalties in that first half. 
Mayville State had five for 63. Dickinson six for 59. So we had over 120 yards and penalties, 11 penalties between the two teams. That is our first penalty here in the second half. So it'll bring up a third down and six now at the 26th of Dickinson State. The Just second down. Just some movement in the interior line for Mayville State, so the five-yard penalty will back it out to the 26 and bring up a second down and six. Okay, so there we go. Second and six on the 11th play of this drive for Mayville State. Begin back at their own 23. Now at the Dickinson State 26, trailing 24 to three, but trying to make something happen. Back to pass Salmon all kinds of time. He's going deep down there. He had a receiver and just in and out of the hands. He got behind the defensive back did number 18 and that is uh, Carlson but just couldn't come up with it in the back of the end zone so maybe it could have been six but it goes as an incompletion on the 20th attempt of the afternoon by Salmon. Salmon just trying to drop it in the bucket over the top of the defender but just threw it a little too far for Carlson to catch up with it so to bring up a third down and six and possible decision time for the Comets whether to go for it if it ends up on a fourth down or try and get some points on the board. Again Salmon will set his offensive unit trips near side naked left side no wide receivers on the far side the Mayville sideline so they'll look to the have fake of the hand nope they go with the handoff straight ahead trying to break the tackle but unable to do so at the 25 and falling forward to the 24 is Neville so Neville will pick up two on the play and it'll bring up a fourth down situation so we'll call it fourth down and what do they got to get they got to get about four yards so fourth and four at the 24 of DSU so a big play here for Mayville State 13th play of the drive for the Comets and it would be a long field goal. It would be about 41-42. So they're going to go for it. The Comets down 24-3, trying to keep this drive alive. It's been their best drive of the day. And they're trying to make it even better here, drive by converting a fourth and fourth. Salmon back to pass. Pressure, he's hit as he throws. He got it off, and I think he completed it. He did. Boy, you talk about staying in the pocket and paying the price. Tim Salmon did that. But I tell you what, he threw a bullet, and it was complete at the 20-yard line. And that's going to be hauled in by their leading receiver, Davidson, and it goes for six yards and a first down. What a play by Salmon with the pressure on him. Yeah, and he took a good hit right as he let go of the football, but a real laser as he got Davidson the football at the 19-yard line and a big fourth down conversion for the Comets. So the Comets go to work at the 19 of Dickinson State converting the fourth down. Again, Salmon shaking off that hit. There's a handoff left side and nowhere to go. That'll be a loss on the play. A lot of blue. Let's get a number on the bottom of that pile. Looks like number 33 for Dickinson State. Brock Jones coming up. That'll be a loss on the play. So a loss on the play back to about the 22-yard line. A loss of three on that rush play. It'll bring up second down and 13 for Mayville State. And the defensive tackle, Matt Anderson, got a great push up front allowed Jones to just follow him into the hole and make the tackle for a loss. So second and 13 at the 22 of the Blue Hawks. 24-3. Blue Hawks lead it. 440 left to go in the third quarter. Again some pressure. Again scrambling. Again throwing it up for grabs across the middle. And there'll be a catch and a loss on the play as it's going to be hauled in. Jilly on the tackle and again the running back uh, number 22 Neville coming up with the catch but it's for a minus one yard and it'll bring up third down and 14 at the 23 of Dickinson State. That was Willems on the coverage, and as soon as the back Neville made the catch, Willems was right there to make the tackle, so a loss of a yard on the completion as Salmon had to run away from the pressure and saw Neville get open, but Willems right on his hip and made the tackle for a loss of a yard. And again, the comments I'm assuming here, going for it last time, probably will tap two plays to pick up about 14 yards. It is third and 14 at the DFU 23. Salmon has been tough in that pocket all day long out of the shotgun. This time scrambles around, throws it across the middle. He's got a receiver at about the 14-yard line. It'll be about five yards shy, but some good positive yardage on the play. And let's see who came up with the catch. Is that Neville out of the backfield trying to see if that's number 22? Yes, it is. So Neville will come up with the catch from the 23 to the 14, a nine-yard reception on the play. And it'll bring up a fourth down and five for Mayville State at the 14. Another fourth down. Let's see what Salmon does here. Fourth down and five at the 14. Have to get to the nine. Salmon comes up to the line of scrimmage. Plenty of time on that play clock in the end zone. Ten seconds yet. Looks to the sideline. Now they're going to take a timeout. So Mayville State, this is really an important drive. And I think they want an opportunity here to make sure that uh, Rocky Larson and the offensive crew have what they want. 
So they're going to burn the timeout, their second, uh, first timeout of the second half. 3-12 left to play. Dickinson State with a touchdown off their first drive, leads at 24-3. The Comets trying to answer with 3-12 left to go. We'll be back here in the third quarter in 30 seconds. Hi, I'm Robin Schwint, Marketing Manager at Consolidated. Reminding you that when you come across a deal you think is pretty good, compare apples to apples. Sometimes when a deal sounds too good to be true, it probably is, and you might get stuck in something that just doesn't work for you. At Consolidated, we will find the best internet, phone, or cable TV package for you, all backed by the reliability and service from over 100 local employees. Plus, if you find a better deal out there, apples to apples, we will meet or beat that price. That's our guarantee. Consolidated. Reach the world from here. But Mayville State putting together their best drive of this football game. This is their 16th play of this drive for Mayville State. It's another I fourth. They, I believe they've taken over nine minutes off the clock because we're down yeah. to 3-12. Yeah, they started this drive. Of course, the Blue Hawks scored with 12-26. Yeah, so they're over nine minutes, nine minutes and 14 seconds on this drive. Fourth down and five at the DSU 14. Play number 16. Let's see if the Comets can go two for two, converting fourth down. Here comes the pressure. Salmon with time. He's got a receiver open. And let's see if we have a penalty flag down. That'll be pass interference or a defensive hold. I guess you can take your pick, either one or. But again, Dickinson State's defensive back got a hold that time across the middle. Flag down at the nine-yard line. I believe he was looking for the tight end, Derek Frederick. And... I think the linebacker maybe got a hand on the back and either grabbed him or pushed him. Let's wait and see. So it'll be pass interference against Dickinson State. So that'll give him a first down. Pass interference. Let's take a look at the play here. Let's see what we've got. Salmon, the replay. Thank you, Consolidated. Yeah, that was, what number was that? Number nine, the intended receiver for Mayville State. So uh, the comments again trying to get it, like Jim said, to Frederick and the hold against the defensive back. First down, Mayville State. And they've converted two of two, one via the uh, pass, one via the rush. And that's their ninth first down of the football game. 17th play of the drive upcoming here for Mayville State. The ball will be at the eight-yard line of Dickinson State University. Again, ready. Salmon will run the offense. Again, claps those hands together. Nope, that is not Salmon. That is a nibble out of the Wildcat, and he's going to be dropped for a loss on the play back to the 11-yard line. Well, that'll be a loss of three for Nebel on the play. Comments again just struggling and with the running game. Nebel with that loss. That's 23 yards rushing for Mayville State in this football game. Yeah, Salmon came out all the way to the right sideline in the formation, and then Neville and the Wildcat took the snap, and Dickinson State wasn't fooled at all. As they got good pressure up front and uh, got a loss of about three on the play. Very impressive drive by the Comets. Their 18th play of this drive. I haven't got any points yet, but they're working on it. Trailing 24-3, 228 remaining to play. Back to pass. Salmon rolls to his left. Anderson chasing him. Salmon tucking. Salmon running. He'll run out of bounds at about the five-yard line, so he'll pick up six Damn on that rush. Baby. It'll bring up third down and uh, goal for Mayville State at the DSU five-yard line. Good athletic play that time by Salmon as Dickinson State had the ball covered downfield, and Salmon just tucked it and took it down the left sideline, got as much as he could, stepped out of bounds as the five, and it'll bring a third down and goal from the five. So Mayville State again, twins to the right. Davidson, who's been their top receiver, goes solo to the left. Again, Neville in the backfield. Salmon at quarterback. Neville behind him. And again, they go to work on third down, two down territory. I don't think the Comets are going to go for a field goal. They're going to go for six, regardless what happens here on this play. Back to pass. Salmon throws it wide open in the end zone. Touchdown. Somebody got bit in, and they couldn't get back. And they go across the field. Hauled in that time by Mayville State, number eight. Mason Ullman, I do believe, came up I with I think it. it was number nine. Yep, you're yep, right. the no. tight end. Yep, Frederick, Derek Frederick, the tight end, will haul it in. So Frederick across the pattern and across the route to the opposite side. They threw it back to him, and he was wide open on the five-yard touchdown pass from Mayville State. What a drive by Mayville State. And the PAT attempt up and coming here on the CHI St. Alexius Health Scoreboard. The placement will be down. The kick will be up. It looks good. And it is good. So Mayville State 
a 19-play drive that covered 77 yards, and it's capped off on the Frederick five-yard touchdown catch from his quarterback, Salmon, and the Comets cut into the Blue Hawk leads. It's Dickinson State 24, Mayville State 10. We'll come back with the Comets kickoff to Dickinson State. We'll do it in 30 seconds. When there's a storm on the horizon, you typically don't get a lot of advance notice. So you brace yourself as best you can and rebuild when it's over. Times like these are what insurance is for, the protection of our livelihoods, our families, our homes, and our lives. We support our community coming together in times of need. As an independent insurance agency, we tailor our services to your needs. At Dakota Community Insurance, we can help you weather the storm. Talk to one of our agents today. Play 65 yards a little quicker. Mayville State went 19 plays and 77 yards, converting two fourth downs. And then Frederick hitting on a third down pass to his tight end. Frederick from five yards out, the PAT kick was up and good by Mayville State's uh, uh, Lacombe, and that made it a 24 to 10 ball game for Mayville State trailing Dickinson State. And we'll have a total of minute 40 left to go. Mayville State, as Jim alluded to, talk about a long drive. Mayville State got the ball back with 12.26 left to go, a minute 40. So, yeah, they went over two. Let's see, that would be a what? About 10, 11 minute drive for Mayville State University. Great drive by the Comets. And if you're a Mayville State fan, that's exactly what you wanted to see from them as they responded after Dickinson State got a score to start the quarter. Mayville State converted a couple of big plays at a fourth down that they got on a, a pass play and then a fourth down converted on a pass interference and then on that third down and goal, the uh, tight end that time, uh, Frederick, just uh, stayed in, bluffed the block and then went into the end zone and the linebacker was late in getting over there and it ended up a uh, touchdown for Frederick as the ball went, out, went into the end zone and the Blue Ox will get it at the 25. Well, they'll take it off. That is Mayville State's first touchdown of the season, by the way. Remember, Northern State shut them out uh, by a margin of 14 to nothing. And the Comets did get a field goal right away to begin this ball game for the first score and now got their first touchdown. And uh, it was an impressive drive by Mayville State. Kind of reminds you of some of the old Blue Hawk drives where they'd go 15, 20 plays. Well, the Comets turned the table and went 19 plays and 77 yards, converting a couple of fourth downs. So Dickinson State, their second possession, their first possession ended in a touchdown run, a great run of 34 yards by Zura. Hawks will take over leading 24 to 10. Again, Zeroff stays in the backfield with Mather. They fake it to him. They look downfield, flip it out to the tight end. All kinds of room. Schumacher breaks the tackle. He's at the 50, the 45, the 40, the 30-yard line of Mayville State and finally run out of bounds as that play will go for a big-time game. They'll stay down to the 27-yard line. So that's a big-time game, 25, and you tack on another a 23, a 48-yard catch and run by Schumacher. Yeah, Schumacher just uh, kind of strolled out to the near sideline and a little flip of the wrist by Madler, and there was all kinds of room down the sideline and a big catch and run for the tight end Schumacher out of Grand Forks. Again, ready, the handoff or the fake of the handoff to Zeroff. Madler back to pass. He tucks it. He's going to run with it. He's got a little bit of room. He'll pick up about three on the play. Now a flag comes down. So let's wait and see what that will be all about. I think that might be a late hit as it uh, looks like Madler maybe took a pop after he was on the ground. Well, let's wait and see what the officials do come up with. Be a gain of about two for Madler. Just looking to get it to Schumacher once again out in the flat, but Mayville State had it covered up that time, and Madler just quickly tucked it and took off and got a gain of two, but the penalty flagged down on the field. All right, so we'll hold off on the situation there and see what they're talking about. So Madler will stand with a pickup. The ball at the 25. That would be a pickup of two. Oh. Referees all in a huddle at about the 35 yard line. We'll watch uh, Reed flogging and see what the call is. Reed, excellent referee, excellent the official crew. They call targeting, I think, so it's a target. Do you have to leave the game on a target penalty? I, I think you do. Number 20 is yep, going, yep. going off, and I think you have to stay out. I think they changed it. A linebacker listed as Ezekiel not, apparently, and that will be a step off, so it'll be a two-yard pickup. 
And then it'll be a penalty and they'll step it off inside the 15 yard line and it'll go down to about the 12. So it's first down number 18 for Dickinson State via the penalty route. And again, Dickinson State will have the football at the Mayville State 12 yard line. So the Hawks responding nicely here to Mayville State's drive after the Comets did likewise to the Blue Hawks first drive of the second half. So after both teams struggled a bit getting some drives going in the first half, been no problem for either team here in the second half. 24-10, Blue Hawks in the lead, and they're threatening again. Madler will put Koontz in motion. They're going to run the reverse. They get it back to Grover, and he underthrows it. He had a man wide open out there, and there again, another penalty play. And that looks like maybe another helmet-to-helmet. -helmet. Tried to get it out on the flat that time, did he? To, uh, to Will Madler, the quarterback, and it goes incomplete, but let's hold on and wait and see what the call is. Yeah, Grovem lined up at a wide receiver position, and they ran the reverse and then doubled it up, and Grovem was coming back across the formation as Madler was out in the flat, but just as he let go of the football, he took a pretty good pop, and the helmet came off, and they'll get the personal foul penalty, go half the distance to the goal, and another first down for Dickinson State at the six-yard line of Mayville State. 19 first downs now for Dickinson State, so first and goal for the Blue Hawks. And the ball spotted where they put it down. Jim said the six, and that's right where it goes down. Six to Mayville State. 45 seconds left to go here in quarter number three. Dickinson State looking to add to a 24-10 lead over Mayville State. Zeroff stays in the backfield. He's up at 88 yards rushing in this football game, closing in on a 100-yard ball game. Again, Madler readies himself. He'll put Zeroff right to his right. Schumacher in at that tight end position in the slot. Koontz in motion. Sickler the wide out. Quarterback Madler collides with running back Zeroff. Cuts back, and Madler traps into the end zone. No flags down, and Madler will score on the six-yard touchdown run. So the busted play turns into six for Will Mandler, his first rushing touchdown as a Blue Hawk football player. The Bismarck High grad having again a solid afternoon and a nice makeup after the busted play for the Blue Hawks. And the Blue Hawks, of course, helped that time by a couple of major penalties by Mayville State and another quick drive as they score with just under 40 seconds. So they took about a minute off the clock after Mayville State took about 11 <laughs> minutes off the clock. Four play, 75 yard drive, and the PAT attempt is up, and the PAT attempt is good for Dickinson State. As the PAT, up, oh, what do we got? Flag again? Well, let's see what the flag to look. The flag came down well after the kick, so I'm uh, suspecting it's going to be an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty as the officials going to gather once again and debate what they want to call. All right. Well, we got the lead is up to 31 to 10. Maybe they'll set it on the kickoff or something. Another personal follow. There was a targeting and two personal follows against the Mayville defense on that uh, series, and Dickinson State took advantage of it. Four plays, 75 yards. Madler on a six-yard touchdown run, and the Blue Hawks, Bolt out to the lead now over Mayville State of uh, 31 to 10. We'll come back with the Hawks kickoff to Mayville State with 39 seconds left to go in the third quarter. We'll be back in a half minute. All right, thank you much, Tristan. The Blue Hawks will kick it off. The penalty assessed on the kickoff attempt, so it'll be kicked off by Chase Miller from the 50-yard line with 39 seconds remaining to play on the CHI St. Alexius Health scoreboard. So the Blue Hawks and Mayville State, well, we've had three possessions and we've had three touchdowns in the first or, or the uh, third quarter after both teams, as we alluded to, struggled a little bit offensively in the first half. The Comets are going to get another opportunity here, down by 21 again with 39 ticks remaining to play in quarter number three. There's a kick, kind of a pooch kick. It's going to carry down. Fair catch taken. It'll come out to the 25. That time is a fair catch taken by uh, Zeidler Carlson and Mayville State will go to work at their own 25-yard line. 11-plus minute drive for Mayville State. Last uh, time they have the football 
a 19-play drive, covered over 11 minutes, and again, they went 77 yards and converted a couple of tough fourth down situations on this drive. So let's see if Tim Salmon and his offensive crew can come back and again uh, move the football against Dickinson State's defense. The Comets in this game have rushed for 30, passed for 99, so up to 129 yards at halftime. The Comets were only at 48 total yards in offense, so they improved quite a bit here in this third quarter. Again, Salmon will put his running back, Neville, to his right. He'll drop quickly back. Here comes the pressure. He's going to lob it out there, and Hartwell on the coverage will go incomplete. Good coverage by Jaden Hartwell on their prime receiver, Davidson. Now Davidson hobbling. He's going to go down to the ground. I don't know if he cramped up or if he twisted an ankle or something, but he's down. He took a couple of steps and just went down to his knees on the incompletion. He's been their leading receiver at halftime. He had a total of five catches for only 13 yards. That's a couple on this uh, third quarter, so let's wait and see what it is. The training crew, Tim Kreit, out there taking a look as the Mayville coaching staff coming over and there, I believe, trainer coming over to take a look at it with that incompletion. Salmon now on the afternoon has thrown for a total of 99 yards, 14 of 25, 99 yards, one touchdown, no interception. And again, well, I noticed on the uh, pattern, Davison kind of pulled up at the end, so I don't know if he pulled something or just all of a sudden cramped up as he started to walk back to the huddle, took about two, three steps, and then went down to a knee, and now he's laying on his back. Well, they're up. They're going to, I think, help him up. It might just be, well, you know, usually when you get a cramp, they'll pull that foot back a little bit and lay it out. Make, like, almost looks like maybe twisted an ankle or maybe a knee. I guess you, the lower body. I love when they say lower body injury. <laughs> I don't know why we can't just say he twisted his knee or twisted his ankle. We'll call it a, uh, and we'll see if he comes back in. It almost looks like he's very gently putting not much pressure on that right ankle or right knee area. But again, he's going to go off uh, pretty much under his own power. He's got a shoulder or a hand on the shoulder of one of the assistant coaches or and or trainer that came out. So it's good to see him going off that way. But it'll bring up a second down and 10 for Mayville State now at their own 25-yard line, trailing 31 to 10 here as we play late in the third quarter. The Blue Hawks with the lead. Blue Hawks, again, two possessions, two touchdowns. Comet, one possession, one touchdown in this third quarter. Their second possession of the third quarter. Again, ready. Salmon now in the backfield. Neville stays in. He floats out there looking deep again. Going downfield and batted away. Good defensive play. Hey, that's the way you play Tell Lundy, the young man out of Weibo, Montana. Played it perfectly, got beside the receiver, kept his head back on the ball, and batted away at the last second. And Tell, of course, has uh, battled through injuries, hasn't yeah. played much over the last two years, and finally healthy to get the opportunity to play some football at the college level. And that time he had good coverage, able to get the hand in there and knock it away, bring up a third down and 10 for the Comets. So Mayville State looking at third and long. Salmon again up to the line of scrimmage. Talks to all his linemen from right to left then backs up about five yards to the 20. They got to get out to the 35. Line of scrimmage the 25. To his right is Neville. Neville again will he come out? Nope, he stays in. They go out in the flat. He got a receiver out there but well short of first down yardage. Had to get to the 35. It's hauled in there by Azure, the tight end, but he gets about to the well, where they put it, 31 yard line about maybe 32. That'll be a pickup of about six on the play. Oh, they put it all the way to 33, so an eight-yard reception on the play. So it'll bring up a fourth, a fourth down, down and about one on the comments. Are they going to go for it here? The play clock winding down. I don't think so, but let's oh, see. There's only five seconds left, yeah, so let's see if I think gonna... they're just going to run the quarter out. Yeah, that's what they do, trying to draw Dickinson State off sides, and the quarter does come on end. So we'll come back, fourth down and three for the comments at the 32-yard line of Mayville State. We'll see what they like to do. Dickinson State, 14 points in that quarter for the Blue Hawks for the Comet 7. And it's 31 to 10 as we head to the fourth and final quarter. Dickinson State on the CHI St. Alexia South scoreboard. We'll be back in one minute on KDIX, KMAB, and Consolidated Live. Hi, Dan Porter here. When you're having trouble getting your car or truck in for service, think Dan Porter Motors. Fast express service. low price tires with rotations for life. Free alignment checks. Free car washes with service. low price daily rental cars. Shuttle service to and from work. Give us a call at 227-1272 or see us on the web at dpmotors.com. That's 227-1272 for all your service needs. Give us a call. 
down 31 to 10 with 15 minutes remaining to play but they're going to roll the dice and see what happens might be a quick kick also salmon has the capability of punting so let's wait and see there's the kick no he's going to drop back roll throw it across the middle they got a receiver ah he got enough for first down yardage nice catch that time by at kelby azure the tight end gets out across the 35 just a very That's safe play and the hawks had it covered pretty well they only needed about two and a half and they got three on the play Adger just running a crossing pattern just beyond the line of scrimmage, and Salmon hit him just as he came into his vision and able to turn up field and get just enough for a first down. Tenth first down for Mayville State, so first and ten at their own 36-yard line. Well, the Comets keep this drive going. They're three for three on fourth down attempts. They've been impressive on fourth down. Back to pass. Salmon, he's got a man wide open on the far sideline out at the 46-yard line. That's going to be hauled in by Clayton, and that'll be a pickup of 11 on the play. And another first down on that reception by Clayton. 17 now of 25, a 121 afternoon in yardage, and a touchdown and no interceptions for Salmon. First down, number 11. The Comets had two wide receivers to that side. One went deep. Clayton kept short. The DBs went with the deep receiver, and Clayton was wide open. And a first down for the Comets. 31-10. Dickinson State in the lead over Mayville State here early in the fourth quarter. Salmon bobbles the staff, hit as he throws it, and just throws it into the Mayville State bench. It goes incomplete, and it'll bring up a... Uh, second down and 10 for Mayville State. So second and 10 for the Comets at their own 47-yard line. I don't think we'll see the Mayville punter maybe, Jimmy, the rest of the game. <laughs> maybe not, as uh, Mayville State has converted uh, two pass plays and a one via penalty on fourth down. And so the Comets, well, I guess you're down 21 points in the fourth quarter. You need to put points on the board. And the Comets converted that fourth down. Now a second down and 10. They've been outstanding going for it on fourth down. This team has uh, played really, really hard and played darn well in this ball game. Back to pass Salmon all kinds of time. Across the middle, tipped, and it's intercepted by Dickinson State at the 40. Back across the 50, still on his feet, and finally brought down at about the 38-yard line. That was tipped by the receiver. I'm trying to get a number. Number nine, it looks like, for Dickinson State. Nope, eight. No, number eight for Dickinson State, Joey DeMarco, the transfer from Minnesota. So DeMarco comes up with the interception and a nice return from the 40 to about the 40, about a 20-yard return on the INT. First turnover for Mayville State in the football game. Salmon just kind of overthrew that, and the receiver went up and tried to get a hand on it, but instead of knocking it down, he knocked it up, and then DeMarco ran underneath it, made a nice return, and the Blue Hawks have it in Comet territory at the 37-yard line with 13.42 left in this one. So Dickinson State, great field position. Madler now Brown back in at running back, and they fake it to Brown. Madler drops back. He's got all kinds of time, scrambles away from it. There's a flag. That's going to be a holding penalty, and Madler will just run for about five yards and run out of bounds. It was a late holding spot, I think. I'm trying to see if it was number 71 for Dickinson State. He's got his hands on his hips. They did a good job at that last second when Madler turned. I think Brandon Benick maybe got a hand on the jersey of a Mayfield State defender. Now, the penalties are less, but it's still going to be a lot of penalties for both these ball clubs, and I think... You ask both coaches after the game, I'd say that maybe would be disappointing for both coaches, the number of penalties um, in this football game. They'll step it off 10 yards back to the 48 of Mayville State. And both teams have taken advantage of penalties. Of course, Mayville State on their touchdown drive had a pass interference on a fourth down that set them up on a goal to go. And then the last time Dickinson State had the football had a couple of personal foul penalties that really open things up for them. Wide open, Schumacher again, the tight end. He's across the 35 of Mayville State, down to the 30. 
Boy, he's had a great afternoon catching the ball for Dickinson State. So Schumacher will go from the 48 of Mayville down to the 30, an 18-yard reception. And boy, Mather really piling up the numbers, throwing the football this afternoon for Dickinson State. And the Blue Hawks have a couple of good at tight ends. Uh, the Schumacher having a good game this afternoon. The senior out of Grand Forks, a transfer from Bemidji State. The other tight end, of course, Galen Brantley, a junior out of Alaska. So they've got two pretty good tight ends, both in the blocking and in the passing game. Yeah, Brantley all conference and Schumacher looking like it today. There's Brown on the carry. He's going to be hit and drop for a loss on the play. Back to the 31, so that'll be a one-yard loss. The Blue Hawks this afternoon, about where they were last year in Billings. They had 106 rushing. They have 105 right now. The pass, Mandler, 17 of 27, 244. No touchdowns and one interception. So the Hawks, again, well over 300 yards in total offense, and they'll look at a third down and three at the 31 of Mayville. Again, quickly up, he goes with almost a power formation, just solo wides right and left for Dickinson State. Sickler and Coots, again, Brown, again, will shift over beside Mather. Again, they got Brantley and Schumacher, the double tight end. And there's the handoff to Brown. He turns to the left side, breaks the tackle. He's down the sideline. He's got first down yardage and more. So Brown will pick up yardage from the 31 to the 24. For Brown, that's seven yards for Dickinson State. They're 20 of first down. Brown now... Five carries for 21 yards to go with Zurov. 11 carries for 81 yards today in the football game. They just brought Schumacher across the formation from right to left, kind of like a pulling guard from the tight end position. And Brown just got on his hip, got to the outside, and got first down yardage. Again, Schumacher shifts left to right. Again, twin receivers. A fake to Brown, dropping back. They're looking for Sickler across the middle. Throws it behind Mountain that time, who was open at about the 10, but a little bit behind on the right hash mark. Bowden tried to reach back, uh, but Colin couldn't come up with it, so it goes incomplete. Nice try by Bowden, but not enough zip on that pass by Madler. So Madler now 17 of 28 for 244 in the ball game. And he'll bring up a second down and 10 for Dickinson State with the ball spotted at the 34-yard line of Mayville State. 11-26 remaining to play. Dickinson State in the lead on the CHI St. Alexis South scoreboard, 31 to 10. Madler again some time. Madler looking for Sickler going deep. Sickler down there, batted away. Double coverage again on Sickler. And at the last second, they batted away. Sickler with that solid first half. Hasn't caught one here in the second half. As we said, he had 11 or 10 catches for 165, four for 54 in the first half. But Mayville's gone to double team on him exclusively in the second half. And that time batted away at the last second. Just threw it up for grabs, and Sickler uh, tried to out-jump the defenders. Jordan Richardson, the defensive back, able to get a hand on it as Sickler got his hands on it, but knocked away by Richardson, so a good play by the DB for the Comets. Again ready. Brown will be to the left of Madler. They're on the left hash mark, moving to the south end, the scoreboard end. Madler back to pass. He's got time again, steps up, fires it across the middle, trying to go to Bowden again, and it's going to be incomplete again. Threw it behind him as Bowden came out. Uh, to the numbers and then cut towards the hash mark and the pass sailed behind him and not even close to being hauled in. So it'll bring up a fourth down and 10 and see if they're going to send the field goal unit out. Looks like they are maybe. Yep, this will be a long field goal attempt. So Chase Miller will come in, fourth and 10. So Miller will attempt a field goal for Dickinson State. And they'll put it down at the 31. So a 41-yard attempt for Miller on the left hash mark. Not much of a breeze, but a little bit of a breeze. Kind of crosswind southwest. Madler will hold. Good snap. Good placement. Kick is down. Got plenty of distance. Let's see if it got through the upright. It did. It's good. So James Miller hits the 41-yard field goal attempt. And the Dickinson State University Blue Hawks increase their lead to 34 to 10 on the CHI. St. Alexia South scoreboard over the Mayville State Comets. That drive again for Dickinson State covers a total of seven plays. And they took over again at the Mayville 37-yard line after the interception for the Blue Hawks. And it will be a drive of 37 yards and seven plays. And Dickinson State leads it 34 to 10 with 11-11 remaining to go. Bunch of aces on the scoreboard. We're back with the Hawks kickoff to Mayville. We'll do it in 30 seconds. Challenges and struggles are part of everyday life for all of us. At Infinity Real Estate Group, we don't back down and we take it all in stride. One, two, three, four, five, six, you go girls! 
In these struggles, there are no mistakes, only life lessons. We may not be that good at some things, but we do excel in real estate. We are Infinity Real Estate Group. Experience the Infinity Way. Well, back with you, Dickinson State, three possessions, three scores, two touchdowns, and a field goal. They lead it now, 34 to 10. That kick's going to carry into the end zone, and just watching it go into the end zone that time for Mayville State is Carlson, so the Comets will get it back at their own 25-yard line, trailing now by a margin of 34 to 10 with 11 minutes and 11 seconds remaining on the CHI. St. Alexia Tell scoreboard. Dickinson State up by 24. And Mayville State will come out and go to work offensively. Take a look at that defensive alignment for Dickinson State. Like number 36 trotting into the ball game. Dickinson State always get those six and eights mixed up there. No, number 35 into the ball game. Chris Willie for little into the ball game. Nelson into the contest. So he'll work at a linebacking spot. The Hawks have worked a lot of people in that linebacking line spot all afternoon long. Now pretty good depth there. They've used it seven again. Here's some pressure from the right side. Gets away from it. The left side throws it up for grabs and throws it away. Trying to go to his uh, tight end that incomplete. time. Frederick, who caught the touchdown pass, but it goes incomplete. It'll bring up a second and ten. It'll stop the clock at the 11.05 mark. 17 of 28 now in the ball game for Salmon. And he has thrown for 121 yards, one touchdown, and one interception. So second down and ten at the 25. A lot of pass attempts. The Blue Hawks have thrown at 58 pass attempts between the two teams. Pass attempts and penalties have been the predominant theme of this ball game. Uh, both teams with a lot of penalties, a lot of penalty yards, and a lot of pass attempts. Again, 34-10 lead for the Blue Hawks. Simon puts the running back beside him. And that, of course, is Ullman. And across the middle, he's got his receiver breaking a tackle at the 45. Slipped out of the tackle that time of number 32, Cody, uh, 32, Cody Aspect, it looks like. And he broke that tackle. And that pass play will go to the 39. That's a 13-yard reception and a first down from Abel State. Yeah, Carlson made a nice catch and then came off the hit and got the first down out across the 35 to the 39. Mayville State, that is their 11th first down in the football game. So first and 10 at the 39-yard line. And again, long count, back to pass. Salmon takes a look around. He's got another receiver out there open and run out of bounds on the far side by number 27 of Dickinson State, Austin Heimer. But he a pickup on the play of five, so it goes for a five-yard reception. First time we've seen Elijah Roundtree get targeted this afternoon, and he made the short catch for a gain of about four. We'll bring up second down and six for the Comets at the 45-yard line. Well, let's make it second and four, about a six-yard reception. They have to get out to the 49. They spot it at the 45-yard line. 140 yards passing now for Salmon in the ball game, And again, has a running back. Looks like Ullman will stay in the backfield. Goes to the right of Salmon. Back to pass. Here comes some pressure from the outside. They step away from it, but throws it away. That is that Davidson back yeah, into the ball game. Yes, it is, but it was targeted for Davidson, but way over his head. So it goes incomplete, and it'll bring up a third down and about four for Mayville State. They have the football again at the DSU, or their own 45-yard line. So third and five for the Comets. That time, Willems came on a late right, blitz on the weak side, and Sam was able to take a peek at him and throw it a Cross the wing and throw it out of bounds and keep the football alive and bring up a third down. 34 to 10. Dickinson stayed in the lead. Just under 10 minutes left to go in the ball game. Salmon again. Pressure. Salmon across the middle. Throws it behind his intended receiver that time. Out on the flat. That looks like number six for Mayville State. Malik Flowers and it goes incomplete. And like I said, I don't know if we'll see the punter again for Mayville State. And I don't think we'll see the punter for Mayville State. They're going to go for it. On fourth and five, if my memory serves me right, one, two, three, I think they're four for four on fourth down, so why not go for it? Fourth and five at the DSU, or at their own, excuse me, 45-yard line, trailing 34 to 10. Again, ready to go to work. It's the quarterback, Salmon, puts his running back to his left. They'd like to throw it to him. Let's see if they do. They drift him out. Hey, look, here comes the presser. Salmon rolls away from it, comes back to his right. He's just going to air it out. He's got a man wide open. Downfield, that'll be a touchdown. Getting behind the defensive back that time and wide open into the end zone goes number nine, Frederick. Great throw by Salmon. Another fourth down conversion by Mayville State University, this time for a touchdown. Well, who expects to see a tight end 50 yards down the field? And that's where he was. And he got behind everyone. And Salmon just 
uh, heaved it as far as he possibly could, and uh, Frederick able to run under it at the 10 and take it in untouched. So the Comets get their second touchdown of the afternoon, and let's see if they're going to try for the two-point conversion. Looks like they will, so the two-point PAT up and coming. 34 to 16 is the score. Dickinson State in the lead. Again, long count by Salmon. He looks to the outside. He's just going to throw it down towards the end zone. He's got his receiver there. Was he in the end zone? Yes, he was. It's going to be hauled in down there. And that's a two-point successful conversion. Makes it 34 to 18. So it's a two-score ball game. That's a good choice by Mayville State. Cut it to a two-score ball game. So 34-18. So the Comets again cruising on fourth down. Five of five this afternoon. On fourth down, fourth down magic for the Comets has kept them hanging around. That is a six-play drive that covers 75 yards and Mayville State back to within 16, 34 to 18. We're back with the Hawks kickoff to the Comets and we'll do it in 30 seconds. World-renowned YouTube chef Lamise O brings her authentic Caribbean cuisine to the Dickinson area. Island Cuisine is open in the St. Joe's Plaza with available takeout and dine-in options. You'll find their entire menu on Facebook or call 483-9918 to place a pickup order. Enjoy incredible dishes like brown stew chicken or everyone's favorite, Rasta Pasta. Call now to order or stop in. Island Cuisine, located in St. Joe's Plaza, Dickinson. Mayville State has come up with a couple of touchdowns and a two-point conversion as they have put a total of uh, a total in the ball game of uh, well, let's count it up 15 points on the scoreboard in the second half so again Dickinson State led at halftime on the CHI St. Alexia South scoreboard the Blue Hawks have the lead of 17 to 3 and they have scored 17 and the Comets have scored 15 in the second half we haven't had too many Drives where nobody scored in this second half of this football game. So Mayville State will kick it off with 9.38 remaining to play on the CHI. St. Alexia South scoreboard. Pooch kick towards the far sideline. Bounces around and did it get out of bounds? Yep, it did. So it'll be back to Dickinson State. I think one of the Hawks kind of got over there and just pushed it out of bounds. So Dickinson State will go to work first and 10 at their own 39, leading 34 to 18 on the CHI, St. Alexia South scoreboard. Well, that was a nice kick by Lacoma as he just did a little pop-up kick beyond the front line and Dickinson State had to hustle to come up on it on the far sideline, but able to corral it and they'll get the football at the 39 yard line. 34-18, Dickinson State in the lead. Hawks biggest lead has been 24 points with the comments just cut into that. With that nice drive again of six plays, 75 yards, converting on a fourth and five with a 55-yard touchdown pass to Frederick from Salmon and the two-point conversion. Brown gets the call again, turns the corner. He gets to the line of scrimmage, and he'll be run out of bounds right there. So for Brown, no loss, no gain on the play. It'll bring up a second down and 10 for Dickinson State. So second down and 10. The Hawks again, 112 yards of rushing, 244 passing this afternoon. About 360 yards in total offense. Last week they were at about 360. And it will bring up second down and 10 for Dickinson State. Bridger Groveman is for the first time as a quarterback. So they're giving Groveman some time. He's going to tuck it. He's going to keep it. He's going to dive. And he's got nowhere to go. So Groveman, who played as backup last year, playing backup this year. So it'll bring up a third down and 10. So third and 10. Third down and 10. Well, if you're Mayville State and you get a, get a three and out, get the football back with about eight, eight and a half minutes left and down two scores. Hawks looking at a lot of new people in there right now. All new receiver. I see Sickler and Kuntz and that crew on the bench. So they're playing with some other guys right now. And Groveham at quarterback. Madler out of the ball game. 8.44 left to go. Groveham downfield. Fires it across the middle. He's got a receiver. Good throw by Bridger. Good catch downfield that time. Coming up the reception, Kyle Minicky. So Minicky will pick up the yardage from the 39 of Dickinson State to the 44 of uh, Mayville State. So a pickup of uh, 17 on the reception and Grover has his first pass completion and a first down for Dickinson State, their 21st first down. So second unit offensive players getting some work here, at least the skill positions, all new people in, all starters out for the Blue Hawks with a lead of 34 to 18. Grovem gets ready, fakes the handoff, looks down. He's going to tuck it. He's going to run. He's got room. He's at the 30, cuts back to the 29. Great run by Bridger Grovem. He'll pick up 15 on the play. Great read by Grovem. 
and he goes for 15. Well, he initially looked for the tight end in the flat, but had that covered and just tucked it and took off and got a nice gain, tripped up and it fell down at the 30 yard line. The ball came loose, but it was after the uh, contact was made and he came to the ground and the Blue Hawks will maintain possession of the football at the 30 yard line of Mayville State. 22nd first down or 21st first down, no, 22nd first down for Dickinson State. Groveham again goes to Brown. Brown comes up field. He's got a little seam, dives forward to about the 26-yard line. So Brown will pick up about four on the play, and it'll bring up a second down and six for Dickinson State. And great experience right now for these skilled people, Jim, playing in a game that, well, is not over with by any means, 34 to 18. And Pete Stanton giving this crew an opportunity here in the final 10 minutes to uh, get some work in offensively. So second and six, Groveham at quarterback. He'll keep it. He'll tuck, he'll turn up field. He's got room again inside the 20, and he just runs that play so well. He'll pick up yardage to the 19, so that's a seven-yard pickup for Bridger Groven. So another first down for Dickinson State in this football game. The Hawks now at 138 yards in the rushing department, and in the passing department, 261. So they're at about 400 yards in total offense, 23 on the first down category. So first and 10 for the Hawks, and the ball at the 19 of Mayville State. Six minutes and 30 seconds left to go in this contest. Dickinson State leading 34 to 18 over Mayville State University. Again, twin receivers right and left. Koontz now back in the ball game. That's where they're looking. And Koontz is going to try and grab it one hand and it goes incomplete just a little bit too far. Hayden had checked in on that play and it just goes a little bit too far. So Groveham now one of two for 17 yards in the ball game. And it'll bring up a second down and 10 for Dickinson State. At the 19 of Mayville State, leading 34 to 18 over the Comets. Well, they brought Kuntz in just to run that play as he comes back out. As Meineke will come back into the side, uh, the right side at the wide receiver position. So Groveham will roll to his left. He'll look back. Oh, he's got all kinds of room. He cuts back to the 20 to 15. He's at the 10, and again stumbles his way down to about the seven-yard line. And Groveham, with a great run again, goes from the 19. And they put it down at about the eight yard line. So an 11 yard pickup for Groveham on the play. Another first down for Dickinson State, their 21st. So first and 10, or it'll be first and goal, excuse me, at about the eight yard line. So this second unit for Dickinson State doing a very impressive job on this drive. Begin back at their own 39. Bridger Groveham kind of spearheading it with his legs and his arm. They run that little jet sweep. They get the handoff there. Big hole inside the five. Into the end zone. Touchdown for Dickinson State. Number 87. Who is that? Alex Prouse. Prouse of Dickinson High. It's not number 87. So Alex Prouse, the Dickinson High product, working at wide receiver, will score on the eight-yard touchdown run for the Blue Hawks. And the Blue Hawks increase that lead again to 40 to 18 on the CHI. Impressive time, Jim, by that second unit of Dickinson State. And good decision-making by Bridger Groveham as a couple of times he pulled the down ball down when his initial read wasn't there and was able to get a couple of nice runs on the scramble, and that time Prouse on the jet sweep got inside the five, took the initial hit, spun off of it, and able to avoid the second defender and get in for the touchdown. So the Dickinson High product, Alex Prouse, with the touchdown run on the jet sweep to put the Blue Hawks a lead back to a three possession ball game. 41 18 with 538 left to go. Let's take a 30 second break. But what a drive by the second unit for Dickinson State. They go nine plays and they march 61 yards and nine plays led by Bridger Groveham at quarterback. And they lead it now 41 to 18. We'll be back with the Blue Hawks kickoff again to the Comets. We'll do it in 30 seconds. Favorite thing about my street? My co-op. It isn't just about electricity. It's about power. The power of information. About safety. Efficiency. Technology. I am the co-op. I am the co-op. And the co-op is me. Again for Dickinson State. That drive encompasses a total of 61 yards on nine plays and was all second unit guys for the Blue Hawks from quarterback to running back to wide receivers and Dickinson High's very own Alex Prouse 
got into the end zone on that eight yard jet sweep and he scores the wide receiver former midget now a blue hawk and good to see Alex get into the scoring column and Dickinson State I don't think every drive they've had the second half they've scored three touchdowns and a field goal so they've put 24 points on the board Mayville State has put a total on the board in this ball game in the second half of 15 points so points are a little bit tough to come by in the first half for both teams not here in the second half as the offenses have got rolling a little bit still plenty of time 538 third mound just a little bit over half waves through the Blue Hawks all well over 400 yards now in total offense. There's a kick into the end zone. It's going to be brought out across the 15 to the 20, 25, 30, and across the 35 out to about the 38-yard line, a return of about 40 yards. Nice return. Let's see which guy was back returning at that time for Mayville State. Mayville State will take over. I think it was Neville. Maybe. No, I think it was Carlson. It was Carlson. Okay, so Carlson was the guy. They left Neville and Carlson. Yep, as a returner that time, it was Carlson. So Mayville State Dickinson will go State back to work. And Dickinson State uh, will plot out. Let's see if they got some uh, backup folks. It looks like in their few positions defensively for Dickinson State as Mayville State will take over at their own 38 yard line. Uh, trailing 41 to 18. They'll take over with 529 left to go in the football game and again they're going to shift around a little bit they've got some new folks it looks like we'll double check it for you momentarily here back to Paso Salmon will stay in the ball game he's got all kinds of time scrambling around still scrambling there's a hold now he's going to look downfield he's going to throw it up for grabs it'll be incomplete well they're going to rule it a catch I thought he bobbled it on the sideline but they say nope he did hang on to it did number 14 Davidson that about the Dickinson State 42 but those flags came out well before the pass and that's usually the sign of a holding penalty and Salmon was scrambling all over and that's what it is so another penalty in this football game so Dickinson State Pete Stanton given a lot of folks an opportunity to play here in the second half of this ball game and second half of the fourth quarter so Dickinson State again going to work here defensively push the Comets back on the holding penalty all the way back to the 28 yard line. So it'll be first and 20 for Mayville State after the hold with 5'11 remaining to play. 41 Dickinson State, 18 Mayville State. And the comments again set themselves offensively, clapping the hand, Salmon ready to go to work. He's got the snap. We know we're going to see a lot of passes. He's looking across the middle, gets a pass out. It's going to be hauled in at the 40th pickup on the play of about 12 yards as he gets it off to Carlson. So Carlson will haul it in for 12 and it'll bring up a second down and eight for Mayville State. So second and eight for the Comets at the 41-yard line, their own 41-yard line. Salmon now over 200 yards passing, 21 of 33 in the football game for Tim for a total of 207. Two touchdown pass. Oh, he's got a man back deep all alone down inside the 20 and inside the 15 and run out of bounds is number six. That uh, for Mayville State is Flowers. So Flowers with the long catch. As that goes from the 41-yard line all the way down to the just about 11, the 12-yard line. So that is a pickup on the play of 40 yards on that reception. Salmon now 22 of 38 for 247 yards, two touchdowns. Another first down for the Comets, their 13th first down. So these newcomers for Dickinson State getting a test against this Mayville State's first-team offensive unit. And uh, right now, I'm sure not looking as comfortable as they would like to. Salmon, he's got a month to pass. He's scrambling. He's still alive. He's still looking. Now he's just going to throw it away. Good coverage in the secondary by Dickinson State mm -hmm. University. And the Blue Hawks again will come up with a stop. And it will bring up a second down and 10 at the 12-yard line of Dickinson State University. And a good job by the offensive line by Mayville State as Salmon had all kinds of time before he finally had to scramble off to his right and throw the football away. So an incompletion will bring up that second down situation so second down and 10 Dickinson State 41 Mayville State 18 again ready to go to work for the Blue Hawks defensively looks like a couple of secondary guys I think I see Hartwell back in there uh, for the Blue Hawks again back to pass is they try to run the screen they get it set up and good coverage by the Blue Hawks and brought down as Neville after a short pickup line of scrimmage was the 12 I think he stepped out of bounds right about the 12 yard line up oh, they say the 11 so that's a one yard reception 40th pass attempt now by Salmon in this football game one touchdown and one interception it'll bring up third down and nine and of course we know the Comets are not going to attempt the field goal because they've gone it every fourth down in this second half 
and they've completed four of them and one for a touchdown. Salmon back the pass, across the middle, it's going to be incomplete. Good coverage that time. Now filled by Dickinson State University. And to get it inside, I think that time, the number 18, Carlson, but uh, the Hawks back on the coverage. I think that was number 28, Cooper McLaughlin. So it goes incomplete. So to bring up a fourth down situation, fourth down and uh, nine at the 11-yard line for Mayville State. Can they do it again? Every fourth down attempt in this second half, they have converted. Can Tim Salmon do it again? His last one, he threw a 54-yard touchdown pass. Now we got Dickinson State offside, so Salmon's got a free play. He's going to throw it up for grabs in the end zone and throw it away, but he knew he had the free play, so he'll just throw it out of the end zone. So Dickinson State, again, that's their fourth penalty jumping offside in this ballgame. Must have a pretty good cadence because the Hawks haven't looked very comfortable in that. So it'll be a fourth down play over again. Now fourth and four. It'll be at the seven-yard line. They have to get to the just inside the three for a first down. They don't need a touchdown. They just need about to four yards for a first down with 315 remaining to play. And again, Salmon will go to work. Can they make it five for five here in the fourth or in the second half on fourth down plays? They're going to take a timeout. They've got two remaining. They'll take one right here. Fourth and three. The ball on the six-yard line of Dickinson State. We'll take a quick 30-second break on Consolidated Live TV. KBIX and KMAV, 3.15 left to go. Mayville State fourth and three at the DSU six. The Hawks 41, the Comets 18. We're back in a half minute. Western Cooperative Credit Union is dedicated to offering you the best financial services around. We're local, we're personal, and we're great at what we do for you. Join the herd. Western Cooperative Credit Union. 85 years the Western way. Western Cooperative Credit Union is your local loan headquarters. Thinking about a new car or truck, ATV, boat, or RV? We'll make the process quick and easy. Call us today. Western Cooperative Credit Union. 85 years the Western way. The Hub in North Dickinson is more than your ordinary convenience store. From Godfather's Pizza and the Hub Cafe to gourmet coffee, tea, and more. Stop by early. Just about since kickoff time. It has been a hot one. They leave the grandstands now all in shade. The cheerleaders out in the track still in a bit of sun. They're trying to get into the shade. So Salmon has another fourth down play. Let's see if the Comets can go five for five here in the second half on fourth down attempts. They need three yards for a first down, six for a touchdown, trailing 41 to 18. Salmon snaps the hand, gets the snap, drops back, looks. He's got time. He's scrambling. Moves to the right half mark. Fires it across the field, and it's going to be incomplete, and the Blue Hawks will get a stop. Finally, on a fourth down situation, they've got penalty flag down again. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, we made it through the third quarter, at least, without so many penalty attempts. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Unbelievable. <laughs> on Dickinson State. I didn't watch the play, so I have no idea who did it or how late the hit was because we were looking towards the end zone. So first and goal on the penalty against Dickinson State. First down, number 13 for the Comets. And again, they get the fourth down conversion via the penalty route. Yep, that's the I don't know if I've ever done a game where a team's got that many first downs on fourth down in either a high school or college football game, but the Comets have done it today. And to their credit, they have done it extremely well. So first and goal at the three-yard line. Again, Salmon with the long count, 3.06 left to go. He's just going to hand it off. The ball that's fumbled, it's loose. Who came up with it? I think Dickinson stay pointing like they did and uh, doesn't necessarily mean they've got it. Let's wait and see as they untangle down there. They do. So Mayville State after getting the penalty, the fumble recovery, who's got it there? Coming off, is that Tel Wendy? Number 37, I do believe. Let's make sure that is Tel Wendy. So Tel Wendy coming up with the recovery of the fumble. So the Weibo native doing a great job that time coming up with the ball and DSU will get it back on the fumble recovery. Mayville's second turnover, so the Comets had the opportunity to get it in, but turn it over after converting at fourth down again via the penalty, and Dickinson State will take over, and they'll do so at their own seven-yard line with 2.23 remaining to play on the CHI St. Alexia Hotel scoreboard. Let's see what our referee has to say. I think they're not quite sure what they are talking about. Reset the clock. Oh, the clock, okay. 3.01 they go back to, so they'll put a lot of time back on the clock. They were at 2.23, they go up to 3.01. 
think Grovem remains in there at quarterback. Bridger had a great drive. They had their whole second unit in the last offensive drive. Got a new running back in there and on the carry. We'll try and catch a number there. I want to say Brady Santine's number 22. Let's watch as they untangle down there. I'll take a look at Trace Wells and that great consolidated crew doing a super job. Thank you, Trace. That is number 22. So Santine will go for a pickup of two on the play. It'll bring up a second down and eight. The Hawks again, 151 rushing. Now this afternoon, 261 passing, over 400 yards in total offense, 41 points. And again, there's the keep by Grovem. He breaks the tackle. He's at the 20, the 30. He's at the 40. Cuts back at the midfield stripe and finally pulled down just in front of the midfield stripe. By that, number 12. Okay. Jace Freeze. Oh, okay. Jake Freeze out of uh, Grant County Flasher. So Jace Freeze with the carry that time. So Freeze, I saw the two, but it wasn't just the two. It was the one in front, but so Freeze will go. Now on the play for a pickup from the 9 to the 41. So a 32-yard, well, let's check that, yeah. A run of 32 yards for Jace Freeze and another first down for the Blue Hawks. They're 24th of the football game. So that keeps the drive and gives them some breathing room. Freeze back to pass. He's going to throw it out on the flat. He's got a receiver at midfield to pick up a 4 on the play. I think that's Alex Prouse again. Maybe hauling that in. Nope, they say Franklin, number 82 for Dickinson State, hauling that in, and that'll be a pickup of about four yards on that reception. So Freeze, one for one in the passing department for four yards. Second down and six right at the 50-yard line. So second down and six for Dickinson State as they put the ball at the 50. And again, Jace Freeze ready to go right back to work. Twin receivers left and right. There's the handoff straight ahead. And on the carry, Santine to the 45-yard line. So That'll be a pickup on the play of five for Santine, and it'll bring up third down and short for Dickinson State University. The Hawks again, Freeze and Santine, the workhorses on the ground this time. 187 yards rushing for the Blue Hawks, over 200 yards passing, very balanced attack. Freeze back again, drops back, tucks it in. He's going to run with it. He comes across the 40, dives inside the 40, down inside the 37 to the 36-yard line. Now they'll put it back at the 37, so give Freeze a pickup on the play of eight yards, and that'll be another first down, 25th right, first man, down for Dickinson another, State. Do they have to run another play? I think now, that was 17. Was it 17? Carson Hunter, I Okay, the Miles City kid, so... Hunter, fourth quarterback of the ball game, so Hunter will give the eight-yard pickup on the play. And this probably will be the last play of the football game. Cutting up field, all kinds of running room inside the 15 and down to about get a number on that, number 23, Marley on the carry, and that will be a pickup from the 37 down to the 14, a 24-yard gain, and that will bring an end to the football game for Dickinson State as they will just take a knee here, and that will run the clock out. So Dickinson State University will come up with the victory over Mayville State this afternoon as time winding down. I don't know if they'll snap it or not. Now they get the snap, and they're just going to hand it off to Santine, and Santine trying to get to the outside. Santine will pick up about two yards, and there you go. That's the final. On the CHI, St. Alexia South scoreboard, the Dickinson State University Blue Hawks get back into the win column, and they do it with an impressive second half offensively, uh, reeling off 24 points, scoring on every possession except the last one when they ran the clock out, and Dickinson State will win it over Mayville State by a score of 41-18, to 18. but both teams today give the comments credit. They battled hard, they played hard, so did the Blue Hawks. And again, Dickinson State will win it by a margin of 23, 41 to 18. We've got all kinds of activities coming up on the post-game show on Consolidated Live and KDIX, our scoring summary, our statistical look at both teams, team-wise and individually lives, and some other numbers, players of the game, all upcoming in our post-game show, and we'll be back to tell you all about it. We'll do it here at KDIX Dickinson, KMAV in Mayville, and Consolidated Live Television here in Dickinson will be back in two and a half minutes. The Hub in North Dickinson is more than your ordinary convenience store. From Godfather's Pizza and the Hub Cafe to gourmet coffee, tea, and more. Stop by early for breakfast or grab something to go. We carry a variety of donuts that we make fresh every day. If your vehicle is dirty, we now have a state-of-the-art car wash at both locations. Stop in and see what we have to offer at the Hub located on North Highway 22 or the Hub West Dakota Oil on East Villard in Dickinson. We're changing the way people think about the convenience store industry. 
Clogged or slow moving drains are no match for Josh and his licensed techs at Unplugged Drain Cleaning of Dickinson. They provide 24 hour service to solve all your sewer problems. Using only the best equipment along with the latest drain camera technology to resolve issues while maintaining the integrity of your pipes. They take pride in thoroughly explaining your options, providing free estimates and great service, and making sure your issues are resolved permanently. Contact Unplugged Drain Cleaning at 701 290 9737 or online at unplugdrains.com. West Dakota Oil and Fitterer Oil Company proudly offers products and services that help fuel our customers' lives with clean burning propane and bulk fuel and convenient on-site delivery with premium farm and road fuels. We provide energy where and when you need it most with locations throughout Southwest North Dakota. West Dakota Oil and Fitterer Oil Company, locally owned, locally strong, the products you need with the service you deserve. Bravera's more than a bank. We're a group of people in the business of helping communities forge on. At the counter, we offer convenience so the day can forge on. In the thick of the hall, we protect your peace of mind so the season can forge on. And around the table, we make room for everyone so life can forge on. We're more than a bank. We're your path ahead. Bravera, forge your path. I've been at the bank for 25 years and we've had Consolidate as long as I can remember. I know even before before I was here, we've been customers of Consolidated and very happy with, with Consolidated. Dakota Western Bank has six branches and the thing we really love about the telecom system that we have, the voice over IP, is being able to communicate directly with each one of our employees. I think in our industry, we very much believe in uh, taking care of our customers and the service that we provide and we feel Consolidated provides that same service. AV and Mayville, Craig Keating here in Dickinson, Tristan Stur. And again, our uh, final score, Dickinson State wins it on the CHI St. Alexia South scoreboard, 41 to 18. I had a computer breakdown on the stats. Our stats are pretty efficient and effective, so we'll go with those. They'll be a little bit unofficial, but that's what we'll work with. But our scoring summary begins our post-game show here at the back as Dickinson State wins again 41-18. They go to 1-1. One one. Comets go to 0-2. Mayville State got on the board first on a field goal attempt uh, by Brandon Lacombe. Lacombe hit the 25-yarder, and with, uh, again, uh, 9 minutes, 7 seconds left to go in the First quarter, Mayville State, a six play, 30 yard drive, led 3 0. Hawks got it back. Their next drive uh, went a total of eight plays, 67 yards. They're off the first of two touchdowns today for the talented tailback from Dickinson State. He went eight yards on the TD run. The PAT kick was good. And eight plays, 67 yards. Dickinson State led 7 to 3 with 6.10 left to go. Then again, the Hawks got a stop, got it back. Nine plays, 45 yards. Caden Coots on a two yard jet sweep. He took it in the end zone, made it 14 to 3 at the 14.57 mark. First play of the second quarter after Chase Miller hit the PAT, and the Hawks led 14 to 3. And then late in the first half, the Hawks put together a 12-play, 65-yard drive. Chase Miller hit a 21-yard field goal with 17 seconds left to make it 17-3. to And that is the way we stood at halftime. Then the Hawks came out their first drive of the second half. Zurop on just a sparkling, spectacular 34-yard touchdown run, sliding off tackles, breaking through tackles dragging a couple of guys with them, and then broke free at about the seven-yard line and went in standing up into the end zone. And uh, that 34-yard run after Miller's PAT at the 12-26 mark of the third quarter made it 24-3, to a six-play, 65-yard drive. Then Mayville State put together, well, you have to almost call it the drive of the ball game for either team. And he took over, had the football for 11 minutes and 45 seconds, 19 plays, 77 yards, and went for it on a fourth, or no, that was a third down play, excuse me, a third down and goal at the uh, five, at the um, Dickinson State, their own 45-yard line. Frederick got behind everybody. Salmon laid it in perfectly at about the 15, and Frederick just trotted into the end zone untouched on a 54-yard touchdown pass, the PAT. Uh, uh, was kicked, was up and good, and that made it 24 to 10 with a minute 40 left to go in quarter number three. Then the Blue Hawks got it right back again and scored on a Madler six-yard touchdown run. They went quickly, four plays, 75 yards, and it was a, a 31 to 10 lead after Miller's uh, PAT with 39 seconds left going into the fourth quarter. And then the Comets 
again saw Dickinson State put a field goal on the board with 11-11 left to go. A seven-play, 37-yard drive. Chase Miller hit from 41 yards out, made it 34-10. Comets came right back again. This time, Frederick on a fourth down play. Uh, scored on a touchdown catch again as Frederick uh, called in another one from 55 yards out. The two-point conversion was good. At 9.38, it was 34-18. to 18. Then the Blue Hawks went to their second unit the rest of the way offensively, and that unit came in and was impressive. They went nine plays, 61 yards. Alex Prouse, the Dickinson High product, after a couple of great runs by uh, backup quarterback Bridger Grovem, a couple of big runs, 15-11, and uh, a 17-yard run, and then Prouse took it in on the 8-yard jet sweep. The PAT kicked good. That made it 41-18, to 18, and that is the way the ball game ended here at the back as Dickinson State uh, coming away with the victory over Mayville State University as the Blue Hawks win it on the CHI St. Alexius Health scoreboard, uh, 41-18. to 18. They go to 1-1, one one, Mayville State 0-2. Take a look at some numbers here for Dickinson State and Mayville State on the team side of things. Uh, this afternoon, Dickinson State in the ball game, 200, very balanced, 220 yards rushing for Dickinson State, 11 carries, 81 yards in the ball game uh, for Zeroff in the contest for Dickinson State. He led them in rushing in the ball game and uh, in the passing department. Uh, Madler was their leading thrower today. He had a solid game again, 17 of 30, 244 yards passing. He did not have a touchdown pass in the ballgame, but did have one pass picked off. Bridger Grovem was one of two in the uh, passing department uh, for 17 yards, and Jace Freeze was one of one for four yards. So in the passing department, the two, three Dickens, actually Hunter played their four quarterbacks. They ended up 19 of 33 for a total of 265 yards passing, 220 yards rushing, 485 total yards for Dickinson State. They had a total in the football game of 25 or 26 first downs in the ball game and had the one turnover, the interception in the ball game. For Mayville State, didn't run the ball exceptionally well. They had 30 yards rushing, but Salmon really warmed up in the second half. He ended up 23 of 41, two touchdown passes, and uh, again, one interception. He had 200. And 47 yards in the passing department from Mayville State. So the Comets ended the ball game uh, with uh, a total of just about 300 yards, 277 total yards. They had a total of 13 first downs, and they had a total of two turnovers, one pass interception, and one fumble lost in the ball game for Mayville State. And again, uh, they had a nice effort from uh, their uh, tight end who had a couple of big catches uh, in this ball game for a couple of touchdowns. Derek Frederick, the junior tight end at 6'4", had a catch of 54 and 55 yards for touchdowns, one on third down and one on fourth down. He was their leading receiver. And again, their leading rusher was Neville in the ball game. He had a total of 13 carries for 30 yards in the ball game, and the Comets again handled some negative yardage plays rushing, so only ended up with 30 yards rushing in the football game. But again, Dickinson State with the victory over Mayville State, 41-18. Don't have any defensive numbers, as we said. The official stat computer went down, and they're working on that. But uh, Jim, again, for Dickinson State, a pretty solid effort. I think Crew Mattern comes to mind. He was pretty solid in the ball game. Tell Lundy we called his name. Jaden Hartwell in the secondary. Mayville State. Uh, likewise, had a couple of kids playing uh, pretty well. Jared Gay uh, comes to mind. We called Richard Shelton a little bit. Will Flemons once in a while. And some other guys uh, for Mayville State also playing pretty good. So all in all, really solid effort uh, from Dickinson State. Both sides of the football. Comets again got going in the second half. Their defense was pretty solid in the first half. But a competitive as heck against this Blue Hawk football team. Ranked in the top 25 in the nation in the preseason poll and coming off that one-point loss to Rocky Mountain. I thought both teams uh, did some things pretty well. And, of course, the one thing neither team did well was avert penalties in this football game. Yeah, and I think if you're Mayville State, you had to be very pleased with the uh, offensive performance, especially the offensive line. They had a good game up front is that they only had, I believe, maybe two holding penalties throughout. And, of course, Salmon had all kinds of pressure. And the Comets would uh, move and adjust, and their offensive line did a nice job of giving Salmon some time to throw the football. And uh, if you're Dickinson State, you got pressure on Salmon, but just unable to finish off and get any sacks. I believe had one sack in the whole ball game. So the offensive line 
did a nice job of keeping Salmon up, and Salmon did a nice job of running away from the pressure. Of course, he took a couple of big hits, you know, just releasing the football, but that offensive line and quarterback did a nice job. Uh, the wide receiver positions, you know, Roundtree and Flowers have kind of been their leading uh, receivers the last couple of years. Didn't say their names much, but uh, Davison came out and had a good ball game catching the football. And, of course, uh, the uh, backup tight end, Frederick, had the two, tight, uh, the two touchdowns, the one uh, on fourth down in the end zone, and then, of course, the one where he got back behind everybody on the long one. So you had uh, two guys that maybe weren't expecting to contribute offensively today, but Davison uh, getting healthy and, of course, uh, Frederick, your backup tight end, and uh, offensively you saw some good things from Mayvale State. Dickinson State, a little pass ha heavy in the first half. Second half had a little bit better balance offensively, running the football and passing the football. And another good ball game for uh, Will Madler at the quarterback position. And, of course, another solid game running the football for uh, Braden Zuroff as well. And uh, didn't say Noah Sickler's name a lot. But we saw the other guys kind of step up and make some catches. Some of the backups, uh, you saw Nathan Schumacher, yep. the backup tight end, come in, make some nice catches and runs. So they saw a little bit uh, on the offense that they didn't see last week in Billings as they got some other guys into the offense other than Sickler pass, catching the football and, of course, had a little bit better running the football with Braden Zeroff, and then Brown got a little bit at that running back position as well. But still, a lot of things for both teams to work on, both offensively and defensively, to get ready for next week. Of course, Dickinson State making the long trip to Wisconsin next week to take on Wisconsin Stout outside the uh, conference before taking a week off. And so, you know, a lot of things still to work on for both teams. Got to clean up the penalties for both ball clubs, but nonetheless, you do see some improvement. Uh, a lot of coaches say their biggest improvement is from game one to game two, and then beyond that, you just want to kind of improve as you go along. But uh, Dickinson State, like I said, more balance offensively. Defensively, weren't able to get the quarterback sacks, but coverage downfield was pretty good, yeah. but had some penalties on fourth down that you want to kind of avoid. Had some offside penalties that gave Salmon an opportunity to just throw it up downfield. But uh, some things that you can clean up in practice for both ball clubs as they get set for week three. All right, so again, the victory belongs to Dickinson State, 41-18 uh, to 18 on a hot afternoon. Temperatures basically in the low 90s the entire ball game. But again, Dickinson State, their first home game, their only home game in the month of September. And they had a full house today at the back. They enjoyed it. Uh, Mayville State, uh, very competitive, and they really gave it a goal for against Dickinson State from the starting gun until the final gun. And again, Mayville State uh, loses it uh, by a score of 41 to 18, but a lot of positives, as Jim alluded, for both teams and a lot of things they got to work on. I guess that's why you play sports and why you play games, <laughs> to get better and not get worse. And both teams probably will do this the remainder of the season. We'll come back, pick a player of the game for both teams, and uh, we'll have Dickinson State and Mayville State, our ND Pharmacy players of the game, before we do wrap it up here on a Saturday afternoon. You know, we start at 12 noon, so not too bad. We're going to get out of here before 3.30. Usually it's about 4.30, and uh, we'll have our post-game players of the game coming up after this 30-second timeout on KMAV, Consolidated, and KDIX, and we'll be back in 30 seconds. The dictionary defines community as a group of people living in the same place or sharing common goals. Community is the largest part of our name and we make it the largest part of our business. We support our local schools, organizations, youth programs, and local events from Bowman to Bismarck because we all share a common goal to better the quality of life in our communities. Come bank with us at Dakota Community Bank and Trust, your real community bank.
Who are we going to pick from Mayville State? Well, I think you got to go with Salmon because uh, he took uh, some hits but was able to get up. He did a nice job moving away from pressure, avoiding the sacks. He only was sacked once this afternoon. Didn't have real great stats this afternoon, but really uh, put everything out on the line and uh, had a, a good ball game, led his team to a couple of touchdowns and uh, got into the red zone a couple of times and were turned away. But uh, I guess we'll go with him for our Mayville State player of the game. Okay, that sounds good. Dickinson State, I'm going to let you say who you think it is too and uh, we'll see if I agree with you or not. I well, probably will. Uh, I, I'd say maybe Braden Zuroff because okay. uh, he got a couple of touchdowns. That long touchdown was just a, a superb effort. He uh, broke a couple of tackles, made a couple of spin moves. Didn't have big numbers this afternoon, but was just solid. Of course, Madler had a good game throwing the football. Didn't have any touchdown passes this afternoon. So I guess we'll go with Braden Zuroff, the uh, uh, the. Uh, Gentleman from Glen Ullen uh, played for New Salem Glen Ullen and in his fourth year of football and just had a good game this afternoon with a couple of solid runs and uh, getting into the end zone to lead the Blue Hawks to the victory. Yeah, he had 11 rushes for 81 yards. That's about seven yards a rush. Caught a pass for 19 yards, so he was over 100 yards in total offense and two touchdowns. So Braden Zuroff, our player of the game. Well, that's going to do it. Jim and I won't be back here for Blue Hawk football, I think, till about October 5th or 6th because the Blue Hawks are on the road to Wisconsin South Menominee, Wisconsin next week. The home of my good, good buddy, Mark Beagley, will be in Wisconsin land next Saturday at about 12 noon to bring you the uh, Blue Hawks and Wisconsin South. I believe it's the Blue Devils. And then, of course, we will be uh, off the following week. Then we go to Valley City, I think, and then we go to Waldorf, and then we finally come back home in October uh, again, the Blue Hawks only four home games, six on the road, and uh, four uh, or six on the road, and only four home games. But again, today Dickinson State led 17 to three at halftime. They put 24 points on the scoreboard in the second half. Mayville State puts on 15. The Blue Hawks win it by 23. Your final score again on the CHI St. Alexius Health scoreboard. Dickinson State University wins it by a score of 41 to 18. For all of the great sponsors on Consolidated Live TV on KDIX Radio and KMAV Radio, I know Dan and Craig are excited to have Common Athletics back on KMAV this year, and they'll do a great job. We were happy to bring you the game today on KMAV. Jim Dahl and myself, Rod Kleinman, we hope you enjoyed it. I think the comments are going to have some positive things in the sport of football this year. Again, as they get ready uh, to move on to their next game next week, and of course the Blue Hawks move on to Wisconsin. So for Jim Dahl and for myself, Rod Kleinian, uh, back at the studio of KDIX, Tristan Sturr and Mike Renner back at the studios of KMAB. Craig Keating and at the uh, engineering studio and the Gate Camera people here at the back, led by Trace Wells and Ron Rhodes and that great crew at Consolidated. I'm Rod Kleinian. Until next time, you have a great and safe Labor Day weekend. And again, your final from the Bijou Activity Center on the campus of Dickinson State University, Dickinson State 41, Mayville State 18. So long, everyone.